Father Time. He never loses sight. Martinsville Speedway, one of NASCAR's original track. Undefeated, unwavering. Watching over this hallowed asphalt and the legacy he's helped create. It sure was like a grandfather clock. That's right, buddy. Can you hear that? As the ticks of the clock clash with shifting gears, our attention hypnotized by both the past and present. History echoing through every turn. Chastain did a video game move! Holy and each victory forming a new wrinkle in time. NASCAR's oldest track strikes a new hour, ready to welcome its next winner. Martinsville Race Day starts now. FS1 and NASCAR on Fox welcome you live to Southern Virginia. We're just near the border of North Carolina. This the eighth race of the season, so we're almost a third of the way to the playoffs. And the weather outstanding. Blue skies, no threat of rain, temperatures of the 60s. It's already warming up, and we're glad to have you on NASCAR's shortest track, a place long on memories for drivers. And it's a tough place to tackle here over the last seven races here at uh, Martinsville. We've had seven different winners. A guy who, a couple of guys who have won here, and they'll be calling the race. Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer. I'm Chris Myers, and thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a, a great weekend. Boy, what a week for Denny Hamlin. The buzz continuing around his win. Second short track win. He's also won here five times, but you guys have been here all week for practice. Weekend qualifying. Uh, which drivers are you keeping an eye on? He's Hendrick cars. They're all ruby red this week. 40th anniversary of Hendrick Motorsports. This track saved him. Rick Hendrick tells it. You'll hear right out of the horse's mouth they were down and out with Hendrick came here Bodine won the race the rest is history 40 years later they're still here four good hot rods and I think they have a shot to win this thing well I'm gonna go on the opposite side of a very little history but Josh Berry has a lot of history here he's done great in the, in the late model stock races here he's a great short track racer they've been on a roll the last couple weeks clean that up a little bit today and I think they're in contention to have a great day with Stuart Haas's record here at Martinsville yeah, it's funny. The Fords have yet to win this year. The last time Ford did win uh, was here in the fall, and that was across the board. And our defending champ, Ryan Blaney, was the driver who won that. Let's check our, our lead lap. The headlines that just mentioned one of the Hendrick drivers. They have three starters in the top ten. Second straight pole for Kyle Larson and uh, Hendrick Motorsports. And mentioning uh, Denny Hamlin, who is buzzing here he's one win away from tying Lee Petty on the all time list for victories at number 12 and it was the restart buzz when he put that move on his teammate last week in Richmond and the buzz has continued around the restart zone that had drivers and fans talking more like Twilight Zone. Two of Joe Gibbs Toyotas fighting on the front row. It's overtime. Tinney with an early launch in the restart box. Home track win for Hamlin. He jumped the start. They better do something about it. Then he definitely jumped the restart. That's clear as day. Yeah. I've seen guys jump restarts for years. I just know I'm in the vicinity, so I, I just kind of go when I feel it, it's right to go. It's like, oh, I was not as close to the box as I thought it was. The last restart of the day. Guys kind of tend to go earlier than later. That's just part of racing. Where I went, uh, it, it played no difference in the outcome. It's a, it's a black and white rule. It, it, it's not a question. You go before the line, it's a penalty. I think if I was Truex, I'd definitely be as disappointed as what he was. It's aggravating to, you know, leave an entire race, dominate a race, and then have it, you know, go away that way. You know, I clearly lost my cool and did some things I'm probably not proud of. The leader, most of the time, on it, I feel like is at a disadvantage. I think it's a... A privilege uh, to have the lead. I think that you should have an advantage um, to start the race where you want to start the race. I don't know. I've always just went when my nose was inside the zone. We just can't be afraid to make those calls and to to keep everybody reined in. <laughs> I don't think anything should change. It's going to be very difficult to officiate that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it is uh, regulated going forward, for sure. 
Yeah, and a short track like this, I mean, where position is so difficult to make up, that's where, as you have told me, a restart can help you do that. Real quick, Clint, how about that? Fans are watching closely. Will NASCAR be calling it differently or more closely starting today on the restarts? Well, I mean, we're definitely under a microscope, right? I mean, we've had a week. We're still talking about it. I cannot wait for the first of this race to have a restart <laughs> and, and get this behind us. But it is weighing on everybody. You know it's weighing on NASCAR. And, yes, if something's out of bounds at least a little bit, they're going to be forced to make a call probably tighter but it's still a balls and strike call no different than a baseball game and an umpire Kevin well look I, I agree with all the drivers and all their comments in there and I and well wait a minute no, it's on both on. sides of the fence hold on. exactly and, yeah. and it is it is a both sides of the fence call that we, that we had last week as a driver you know going into that last restart you put NASCAR in a difficult box because if you go early, they might call it, they might not. And that was pretty early last week. We said that on the broadcast. You know, he, he definitely rolled early. Um, but look, there's not five, six, seven laps to, to go back and review that call. And the one thing I've learned in the TV booth this year, things happen quick. And at the end of that race, uh, Denny Hamlin put them in a box and, and they didn't want to be the deciding factor. But on the flip side of that, Martin Truex has to be ready for that. He, he needed to be ready for Denny to go a little bit before the box and Denny caught him sleeping and, and he wound up getting beat to the first corner which Martin was in a box because they had a bad pit stop but yeah. ultimately the only chance Martin had was to get there side by side. Does it change anything that they were teammates in that situation. Uh, no, no absolutely okay. not and, and, and you know I think I think um, the, you know the, the thing that it will change is has how NASCAR officiates this box this yeah. week. So if you <laughs> go be a little tighter if, if you go a half inch before the line today <laughs> you're going to get a penalty and that's the way this goes it goes in cycles. You have you have weeks where you know NASCAR says okay now it's out of hand hey fellas we, you know we're going to have to call this a little bit tighter. You Strike need zones not lay shrunk back. up a little bit. That's right. <laughs> and don't lay back. Don't do this. Don't do that. They're going to call this restart restart zone tight today. I promise you. Another part of the broadcast to watch closely. Let's welcome in the crew from our studio show in Charlotte and Shannon Speck for more on this. Get some thoughts from Larry and Jamie as well. Shannon. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Here with America's crew chief Larry McReynolds and of course the Daytona 500 champ Jamie McMurray. You just heard Kevin say we're going to see how they officiate it moving forward. And I think the word I've heard you say many times, Larry, is just consistency, right? And I think that's the thing the entire garage area is looking for, is they don't care how they monitor it, how they regulate it. Just do it the same mm -hmm. every time. It doesn't matter if it's lap 10 or lap 410. It doesn't matter if it's Martinsville or Talladega. Just we don't care how you do it. The rule's simple. The leader cannot fire off, the control car cannot fire off until his Front bumper breaks the plane of the restart zone. There's another part of the rule. Other drivers can't lag back. They tell everybody to stay closed up. I don't want another way of regulating something with a machine. I love watching the Atlanta Braves play, and I like the fact that there's an umpire that's calling balls and strikes. I don't want to see a machine say ball, say strike. Yeah. But what I do want, I want that strike zone the same in the top of the game and in the bottom of the ninth. I don't want that that strike zone moving around. Yeah, and I would I mean I would agree with the call that the no call was the right call by NASCAR last week because it's never been called before. We haven't had anyone get in trouble for this. So, I like that and and I think the leader does need to have an advantage. The 11 team earned that by by winning off of pit road and Larry mentioned it. If you're the leader, you're not only having to race true X's on your outside. You're also having to manage Joey Logano who's behind you because at that particular track we've seen third place get the lead before on a restart. So he's got a lot to manage there and I think if we go back and, and we think about the intent of this line we we didn't used to have a box we used to just have a line in the vicinity of right it was close <laughs> yeah. to and they did that because the leaders were accelerating and then slowing down and it was causing a, an accordion effect and wrecks uh on the restart so i i think they did this just right i like the way it is and and i'm with clinton kevin though i i think it will be micromanaged a little bit more today. it'll certainly be one of the drinking words today in the race of course chevy and toyota have been the class of the field all single a season long the fans definitely know that they start on the front row today to kick off 400 laps in Martinsville, here is what is around the turn. First on the clock here on race day, the legend of Buddy Arrington, one of the sport's last independent drivers. Can the hands of time really mend all wounds? We unwind this season's biggest rivalries next. Then Chris Clinton, Kevin chat with Martin Truex Jr. after his frustrating finish in Richmond.
Jeb Gordon's taking more than a few clocks home. He gears up to talk Hendrick Motorsports. Later, Chris clocks in some quality time with Mr. H as he reflects on his history at Martinsville and the team's hot start. Don't miss a second. Short track racing is around the turn on FS1. Welcome back to race day and welcome to the second short track race in a row. Martinsville, of course, the oldest track on the schedule and every driver in the field knows, teammates or not, this is the perfect place to let out aggression and fuel the fuse. The retaliation list is building. Tempers flaring. We got some mad race car drivers. Are you my direction? No. Okay. Coming. Spinner, turn two. They just go three watts for no reason. I left a little mad, but um, yeah, it's part of it. And in the wall in turn two after the flag. Yeah, I felt like when that last wreck happened, he just drove through us. So yeah, I don't know which part of it he's mad about. Eric Jones had a bit of contact there with Chase Briscoe. He seems to have an issue with me every week. Nah, I never got a phone call. Cars bumping and grinding back to the corner. I heard a teammate running me up the track. <laughs> Is he running into me? I didn't really appreciate, you know, teammate racing me like that. I think he just is more mad at Denny, but I was the closest one to take his anger out on. <laughs> That's, of course, just some of the anger we've seen this season. And Martinsville might have some maybe things that we don't know is actually happening underneath the surface bu bubble up today. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the, the wrecks uh, that happen, we don't even know that there's a feud between them. Obviously, with Christopher Bell and Kyle Busch, we know they're mad. And, and the thing that happens at Martinsville is you race so close together and you have so many options on restarts that if someone makes you mad today, you automatically remember maybe what's happened <laughs> earlier in this season. And we've seen it time after time at this track. A lot of feuds. This might have been the best retaliation of all time. Matt Kenseth uh, wrecking Joey Logano. Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott. When we get down to the end of these races, we see guys lose their mind, Larry. Yeah, and, and a lot of times what happens at Martinsville, it's not retaliation from something that happened in the earlier in the race. I see Denny Hamlin in a lot of these highlights right here in that 11 car. It's something that happened prior to Martinsville. If you go back to Matt Kenseth and Joy Logano, that was from a Kansas race a few weeks before. We've even seen teammates at each other. Two of the best at Martinsville a number of years ago, Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson were at each other, and there were some definitely some heated times between those two all over arguing for territory at Martinsville. Denny Hamlin likes to throw a concrete brick, right? Isn't, isn't that what <laughs> Something it is? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Let's head back out to the track. Join Chris Myers, who's with the three-time Martinsville winner and someone who's definitely had his fair share of drama at this racetrack. Chris? Yeah, thank you very much, Shannon. Yeah, Martin Truex, by the way, the only driver this year to complete every lap. He is your points leader and has had success here. It's nice to see you. Thanks for coming by after a, yeah. a crazy week. How comfortable are you today, Martin, uh, with your teammate Denny Hamlin and restarts as we get ready to roll here? Yeah, very comfortable. I mean, we've been doing this a while, been here a bunch of times, and um, yeah, it's business as usual. Last week's over. Well, I think when you, when you look at last week, obviously we're still talking about it, and, and Clint, Clint is <laughs> so frustrated. You. Clint is so frustrated. So take me back to that restart. What are you thinking when you go into that box? Uh, are you thinking he, you know he's going to go? Uh, with your teammate Denny Hamlin and restarts as we get ready to roll here. Yeah, very comfortable. I mean, we've been doing this a while. been here a bunch of times, and um, yeah, it's business as usual. Last week's over. Well, I think when you, when you look at last week, obviously we're still talking about it, and, and Clint, Clint is <laughs> so frustrated. You. Clint is so frustrated. So take me back to that restart. What are you thinking when you go into that box? Uh, are you thinking he, you know he's going to go early, or you think he's going to go at the line? What's the process as a driver? Because I've always explained it. I've been explaining it to these guys. Sometimes you can get away with a little more on the last one than usual. Yeah, I think that was just a little more aggressive than a little bit. So I was surprised, honestly, at the time. You know, I, I felt like probably going to go early it's a tire spinning kind of track you know you want to try to get that jump but um i was caught off guard by it obviously everybody was so uh, yeah you know today's a whole different day and um we'll see how they uh how they enforce the rules i thought you were going to say well we didn't get in the box he said what yeah, do you well, feel yeah. like when you get in that box he, he's <laughs> Near, used to the smart <laughs> <the> box. <laughs> take me to the day martin i'm tired of talking about it. last I week it. i know Moving i'm gonna on. help you out Another fast car, another short track. Dominant last weekend, good in Bristol. How about Martinsville? Yeah, you know, I think um, for whatever reason this day and age, it's this engineering type racing. It's so hard to know what you have in practice and you have a real good sense of how it's going to race. You know, yesterday I thought we were decent on speed, but the car didn't drive the way I wanted it to or need it to for here. So adjustments overnight. Hopefully they find that magic. 
they were able to do it last week. Um, and, and so, um, yeah, we'll just see. This place is tough. I felt like a lot of rubber went down yesterday. Um, it felt slicker than normal in that rubber, so it's going to be really, really critical to, to get your car turning good today, I think. Would it feel good like redemption? It'd feel great. Redemption's always good. You know, last week was tough, but my team's doing an awesome job. Our cars are really fast every week. We're going to get some wins soon. When you when you talk about the, the racetrack laying rubber, what's your preferred method? Do, are you, do you want to split the rubber getting in and dime in the corner, or do you like to run the curb? And just talk about having a versatile car and how important that yeah, is. Yeah, for sure. As you guys know, versatile their versatility here is important. Being able to straddle it to get that run off to make passes. And sometimes you can make really good time just wrapping the curb. So I've had cars that would, would only do one thing or the other, and I've had cars that would do both here. There's no rhyme or reason to it. So you just got to feel it out, make adjustments from there, and, and find something that'll work for you. Is this a, is this a racetrack high on, on your favorite list? Or where, do, where does Martinsville rank for it's, you? It's up there pretty yeah. good. You know, for years it wasn't. I struggled yeah. here for a yeah. long time and, and finally got things going and going in the right direction since I've been at, at you know, Toyota JGR. And, um, yeah, so the next-gen car, it's been just kind of okay. We haven't really hit on it yet with this thing. Um, so today is uh, is a big day. Hopefully we can nail it. For yeah. me, it's down about your shoes. That was where it ranked, like that's place. where it ranked on my list. Somewhere right down there. You didn't like it, no. huh? Yeah. It's hey, all right. Mark, you said the wins will come. It's got to be frustrating, no matter who you are. To what the last four times you've had a lead, been passed on that lead lap. Does that frustration build? Do you, do you block that out every time you come to race until you get that that next win? I mean, you've been a champ, so you you know how to ride this. You've been at this a while. Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, we're going to lose a lot more races than we win. That is what is so tough about this sport. And when you have weeks like last week, you have to get over it quickly. You have to move on. And that's what I've tried to do. Then you, it just kind of boils over when you get in that situation again. And it's in a reminder of like, man, this happened again. This sucks. Richmond, five, six times that same kind of scenario has played out. So uh, it's tough to deal with that, but you have to move on. And, and today's a new day. How much do you deal with the pit crew side of things and, and everything that goes there? Do you talk to those guys? Do you have a team meeting? I was always not very good at that. I'm not very good at it either. Yeah. I, I feel like that's a whole separate, you know, system and a whole separate group of people. I let the higher ups deal with that and I just ask yeah. for faster and more consistent. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for coming over. Good luck today. Yeah. And uh, keep it rolling, all right? We yeah. go watch your race. Try, certainly. Thanks, guys. Good luck, Mark, man. Have a good day. Really. And his Joe Gibbs Toyota. We'll continue live. We're on the track to bring you closer to the action, counting it out of the start of the race. And when we continue, we'll be starting. the frustration of Martin Truex Jr. going to a hometown hero, that story, and sitting down with the man behind Hendrick Motorsports, celebrating 40 years of excellence. We'll talk with Rick Hendrick. They've won more races in Martinsville than anywhere else, and they are NASCAR's most successful race team. You're watching live from Virginia. Welcome back to Race Day. A big day for Hendrick Motorsports as they celebrate 40 years since their first win ever at Martinsville Speedway. You see William Byron, the Daytona 500 winner. He's won a couple races at Martinsville. The <laughs> Hall of Famer, Jeff Gordon. We'll hear from him a little bit later in the show. And there are so many things that make this track and this race unique. Of course, the trophy, the train chugging by in the background, the hot dogs. There's also NASCAR history beyond the famous Speedway. Mike Joy has more. I'm five miles from Martinsville Speedway, downtown, in front of what was once a Sears store. Why? Inside that door is a living museum to Martinsville's most famous race driver. Beginning 1964, Buddy Arrington raced a quarter century in NASCAR's Cup Series, 560 races. 148,000 laps. And though he never finished a race on the lead lap, he had 15 top fives, 103 top tens, and finished in the point standings in the top 10 twice. Such was the life of the independent drivers, those without major factory backing or huge sponsorship, who build and race their cars with family and friends and often relied on volunteer pit crews at the tracks. Always wearing number 67 and often with local sponsorship, Buddy was Richard Petty's best customer for used race cars, engines, parts, and even haulers. But this Chrysler Imperial is a car that Buddy and his son Joey and their friends built 
and of which he might have been most proud. In 1980, when NASCAR downsized the cars at Daytona testing, legendary Junior Johnson suggested, buddy, might want to build one of those Imperials. With its slope nose and sloping rear window, this was likely the fastest all-out race car that Arrington ever had. But he got this hauler from the Petties. It's still mostly Petty Blue. This living museum is Joey Arrington's. He was his dad's racing pal, crew chief, and engine builder, and went on to build engines for a lot of winning Dodge stock cars. Joey, what would you most like folks to know about your dad? He was a great teacher. The first lesson he told me was keep your mouth shut and your two ears open. That's the story of Buddy Rogers Arrington, Martinsville's favorite racing son. Funny, that's the advice that Larry gives us every single week. <laughs> Y'all don't, well. don't listen, man. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> what do you have to say about Buddy Arrington tonight? Yeah, I mean, Buddy was one of the nicest guys you would ever meet. And Mike said the word independent. Buddy Arrington put a whole new meaning to an independent racer. He talked about those 560 career starts. The majority of them was driving for his own race team. The other thing Mike said, Buddy, Joey, and friends uh -huh. built the Imperial. Buddy's pit crew was neighbors and friends. They were just volunteer. But he was so loyal to Chrysler, to Mopar, to Dodge. Even in 1978, when the Petties gave it up and went to another manufacturer, Buddy stayed true to Mopar, stayed true to Dodge, and that was the majority of his career. That was a great piece. Thank you so much, Mike Joy, for bringing us that story. And listen, when you talk about history at Martinsville. You absolutely have to talk about the guys who've made history on this racetrack. Here's a look at the winningest drivers racing today at Martinsville. Of course, you have Denny Hamlin with five wins, Martin Truex Jr. with three, Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski both with two. Every single champ competing in Martinsville today, seven of them total, has won at this racetrack. Let's take a look at the tools of the race, sponsored by Northern Tool. Jamie, what are they? Yeah, well, the first thing, you're going to have to manage the restarts. There's going to have to be some give and take the first few laps on a restart because everybody on the outside is trying to get to the bottom. So don't make somebody mad early on for one position. The second thing is to minimize the time on pit road. This is the slowest pit road speed we have at 30 miles per hour. It also has two curves on it. In those curves, the drivers can manipulate their speed and minimize their time, rolling time uh, on pit road. The last thing is you moved or you be moved at the uh, at the end of these races. And we see it every year here. We saw it last night in the Xfinity Series race. If you're the leader and it comes down to the end of this race, the guy in second is most likely going to move you. You see right there, that's teammates moving each other for the win. Uh, and so, guys, I just think about how many incredible finishes we've had here. you got to make a decision. If Something to look forward to <laughs> yes. today. You don't necessarily want to be at first at the end of the race. Coming up, we got the Hall of Famer, Jeff Gordon. He has the Hendrick Motorsports team story. 40 years, 304 wins. A lot of those have come in Martinsville, and the first one was there as well. We'll hear from that coming up as we get you closer to Martinsville. Bubba Wallace starting on the front row today out there. Toyotas have been fast. Saturday on FS1, Texas. Home of the last two World Series champs and home to a brewing rivalry. The benches are clearing. Now, a new chapter awaits as the Rangers... Battle the Astros, Saturday at 4 Eastern on FS1. FS1 Race Day, live from Martinsville, Virginia. Famous grandfather clock and the Martinsville hot dog. Still only $2, believe it or not. Still a fan favorite for the those that attend, for the drivers and the race teams, even for our team of reporters. We'll double team you with Jamie Little and check in. The drivers get ready for the race, and so are our pit reporters and Regan Smith. Regan? Well, Chris William Byron getting ready to go through driver's introductions. A former winner here at Martinsville. Huge day for Hendrick Motorsports. You start 18th. What would it mean to get that 29th Hendrick win today? Oh, it would be huge. I mean, that's we put so much effort into to this race in particular. So uh, we've had success here in the past, you know, with Martinsville getting a clock a couple years ago. So just got to march our way forward. It, it sucks to start where we are, but uh, we had a great race car in practice, felt really good about it, and just have to kind of inch up on it as the race goes on and, and try to be there in the third stage with a shot at a win. So Exalted Chevy looks, looks amazing, and there's so many people here, so many men and women from Hendrick Motorsports, past and present, and it's just a really special day. So it'll be nice to, to get out there and get racing. 
Got some unique conditions today, a lot warmer than yesterday. Is that going to affect anything you guys do? Yeah, I think it just lay rubber a little bit easier, um, which should help us back in traffic, you know, be able to move around, do some of that diamond shape and um, be able to get runs off the corner. So it's pretty tough to pass in, in practice. Um, so I just think that you're going to you're going to need to be crafty through uh, through traffic and also on restarts. William Byron starts 18th, Jamie. Kyle Larson, his teammate on the pole for the second straight week in a row from edging out Bubba Wallace by one one thousandth of a second to how big this weekend is and what it means to Hendrick Motorsports. How awesome was it to capture that pole yesterday? Yeah, it was definitely a, a big pole, so I, I was really happy about it uh, for sure. So just uh, been happy about my race car so far this weekend. Um, you know, it's a big weekend, as you mentioned, for Hendrick Motorsports and celebrating uh, 40 years to the date of the first win. And uh, it was the five car back then. So hopefully it's the five car today. That'd be pretty special, but uh, it's gonna be a tough race. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm happy with my hindercars.com Chevy and see if we can keep it up front. So Kyle, you won this race a year ago, but you still said this place is tough. It just doesn't suit my driving style. What is it about racing at Martinsville that's still a challenge for you? Um, for me, it's just, I don't know, you know, like I, everything I grew up racing was so like fast momentum based, you know, mid corner speed where this is like, you just gotta slow down and I'm not typically the best at slowing down. So um, it's just been hard for me to like piece my corner together and then like do it consistently and repetitive and, and get into a rhythm. Um, but so far my cars felt good this weekend where I felt like I was able to get into a rhythm pretty early on in practice, which kind of helped me get up to speed quicker. So just got to uh, find that rhythm again here early in the race and hopefully, you know, we can lead a lot of laps, get some good points and, and have a shot to win late. Kyle Larson, this five team, they're going to be tough to beat today, Chris. All right, thank you. Yeah, he's led the most laps this year. Back with the guys here on the track. I know this isn't this wasn't one of your favorite tracks when you were here, but you did win here. What does it take? I've heard you talk about long runs and a versatile car. Well, I, I'm I'm really going to enjoy watching the race today because nobody's going to be mad at me, and I'm not going to be mad at anybody <laughs> else. But um, you're, with with what we heard earlier with the racetrack rubbering up and what we saw in practice yesterday that versatile car is is super important to be doing be able to do what William Byron just talked about to either uh, run in uh, split the rubber diamond up in the middle of the corner run below the rubber or split the rubber on the exit of the corner wrap the curb you've got to have all those tools in your toolbox to, to be able to get through traffic and uh, if somebody is running your line so you have to have a versatile car. You're spot on there. If you're not, you're dead in the water. I mean, you literally can't move around and you can't pass anybody, which is so hard to do on this flat racetrack. But I liked what I heard of Kyle Larson yep. right there. The discipline uh, actions of this racetrack are so hard. You need to go a little faster. You need to have another half tenth crew chief. Well, that means I need to get in a corner harder. That needs to pick up the gas faster. If you want me to go faster, both of those things are a no go here. You have to be disciplined. You have to let your car do the work, let it roll around the corner, and manage your brakes, which also manages those tires. It's a big part of running on those long runs that you spoke of, Chris. Yeah, Fords haven't won yet this year, but Legato's coming on, and Blaney, they're both starting in the top ten. Is this a day where they can break through? Yes, yes. yes I think the Ford Mustangs are going to be better here. They were a little bit better last weekend. Joey Logano, big run yesterday, or excuse me, last week in Richmond. Look for him to be good. Look for Blaine to be good. And the Stuart Haas cars. Kevin, you already touched on it earlier in the show. Stuart Haas goes, Chase Briscoe, um, Josh and Barry. Josh Berry are both very fast. All right, let's check the uh, favorites and the long shot. That's an interesting whether fans like or don't like Denny Hamlin. He's up there among the betting favorites, along with Larson, whom you address, and Truex. Yeah, well, I like Truex. I think after these uh, weeks of uh, kind of having to apologize to everybody within your team, you have a little to prove. Well, obviously, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, they're their favorites, but I like the odds there. I like Ryan Blaney. That plus 800, if you want to bet, you want to make some money today, good pick. All right, another long shot. So, it was this where Ross Chastain did the hail mallet, right? So, there, there might be a couple of opportunities there. Bowman coming on a little bit for Hendrick Motors. Yeah, I like Josh Berry at plus 3,000. Huge short track history and won, won some races here at Martinsville. I like that pick, but also like Bubba Wallace at the top of that, starting second here today. Got a fast car. Brad Keselowski, we have seven champs of the sport who are racing in the race today. And Brad Keselowski, one of those, along with Jeff Gordon, telling us about Hendrick Motorsports, why they're celebrating today, how great they have been. And that's his boss, Rick Hendrick. We'll sit down with him. And there is Keselowski. All the champs of the sport that are in today's race, they have won here once before. We'll see if they can do it again at least once. Race Day Live from Martinsville. 
Counting it out of the start of the race and the Hendrick Motorsports three drivers starting in the top 10 today a day when HMS celebrates its greatness from its roots NASCAR's most successful team and a familiar voice to look back. Time it cannot be saved once used we can't get it back and for 40 years Hendrick Motorsports has made the most of every moment. This is the Daytona 500 and thank God as they come to the line this is a first. Check the flag, you win. I love you man. Oh yeah, what a day! One place has always meant more. Martinsville. Time was all but up for HMS in 1984. Rick was going to call it quits. All Jeff Bodine needed was one more chance. Jeff Bodine settled the battle. Who knew that one win would lead to the greatest dynasty NASCAR has ever seen? With one place in center stage. Checkered flag, it's Earnhardt. Earnhardt, no more. Oh yeah, baby, it's awesome. This one's for my mom. Hendrick Hello, dominance continues at Martinsville. Hendrick Motorsports is a special place. And today, we celebrate 40 years. Time can move so fast and yet stand still. God, I love this team. Thank you, Jeff, the Grand Marshal. And there is Jeff Bodine with Jeff Gordon. Bodine with that Hendrick Motorsports saving moment where they really were ready to pack it in back in the 80s. But Rick said, we not only won the race, we got a sponsor. And of course, Jeff Gordon helped to keep it going through the years. There was one other time when Rick Hendrick may have given it up in this sport. But thankfully, the most successful team in the history of NASCAR celebrating here for a number of reasons. Now, Rick Hendrick was going to drive the pace car, but had to have knee surgery, but didn't keep him from talking talking to us about this special moment as we sat down at his home in his garage. Four decades and so successful for Hendrick Motorsports. Big week-long celebration for Hendrick Motorsports. 40 years, if you started with one thing or the top priority of making Hendrick Motorsports so successful, what would that be? Well, I think, you know, you got to surround yourself with good people. Creating a chemistry and a culture that people stay. I think my biggest asset is being able to get along with people. I don't care what kind of business you're in, it's all about people. What do you do when there's friction between drivers or a crew chief and a driver? They call it a pork shop meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the story goes that uh, I was at a race one day and I got mad and I had a pork chop in my hand and threw the meat off of it. I think Chad Canals is one that said, we don't want to have any pork chop meetings. A little meat on the bone. Yeah. Huh? yeah, so you do have a temper. You seem so low key and calm, but, but you're probably one of the most competitive people in any sport. I told someone the other day, I hate losing as much as I like winning. So fear of failure is something. Fear of failure. You build a company or you build a team and when things are not going right, you can do two things. You can run away from it or you can run to it. It's easy when you're winning. It's when you're not winning, it's when it's tough. Nothing motivates me any more than someone telling me I can't do it. Martinsville, a place uh, that has great triumph and great tragedy for you yeah. personally. And that was one of the first cup races I went to with my dad and we've won 28 races there. And then you think about uh, what you lost I don't blame the track on that. You know, it was an accident that happened at the airport. Among the 10 and, uh, killed in the crash, John Hendrick, brother of Rick, and Ricky Hendrick, Rick's son, and retired. Did you think at the time of maybe just stepping away? I didn't know if I could go back to Hendrick Motorsport. All the tragedy that this team is but when we walked in and I saw all of our people there, and you could see the emotions, and we all were emotional, uh, I knew that we just needed to, to go on and honor those people. But you never get over it. Great job, man. Awesome. So we, we see Jeff Gordon for broadcasting, and now he's got his business owner, Starter Vest. The, you walk Starter out. Vest. Yeah. <laughs> How much longer do you want to do this? Uh, until it's no fun anymore, until my body tells me I can't. My mind is like it was when I was 18, 20 years old. Legacy 
at Hendrick Motorsports is not me. It's the people that won the races and they're there every day. And I want that to go on long after I'm gone. I couldn't retire. I mean, yeah, I don't, that, no. That's not in your vocabulary. No. So. <laughs> And it was important for Rick Hendrick to now from what five employees to 600 employees at his race team to bring them all here those invited most of them with their families. So almost 2000 people when you count everybody that are here in attendance at the spot where it all began and is really continuing and that's part of his legacy. He did say he still has a bucket list. You know he's not going anywhere. He's never been to the Indy 500. Not only does he want to go but his driver Kyle Larson will be in that and then the 600 and he'd like to see racing over in Europe even if it's a NASCAR Cup exhibition at some point something that he's been thinking about. Well Rick has an unbelievable commitment to his people and his organization and everything that he's done in this sport is truly amazing but I've sat in a couple of those meetings with Rick. Yeah. There's an unwavering desire to win. Yes. And that bleeds right over to the people and doing whatever whatever he has to do in order to put those people in a position to win. That's, you took the words out of my mouth. When you think Rick Hendrick, you think a winner. You go to Hendrick Motorsports, they win. You go to a Hendrick Automotive anywhere in the country, they win. They win that region, they win the area, and they sell the most cars. Rick Hendrick is a winner no matter what he does. Yeah, and, and for NASCAR, brought people like Joe Gibbs, Gene Haas into the sport, helps many others that you, you don't hear about. Sorry, we're working here. All right, you guys have to work. you got to get up in the uh, in the booth to call the race. Have fun today. I'm looking for those restarts. I appreciate it. Those restarts. I want to hear you hey, guys. good jokes? Go We've I'll been on a roll, and I'm yeah. telling you, this is going to be a good race well. Okay, but we're going to continue. Like the grid walk is coming up. The fans are gathering. Beautiful weather for today's race here at FS1. <laughs> Welcome back live in Martinsville aerial coverage provided by Goodyear powering every lap every mile and every victory on the road ahead. Life moves a little slower around here. A simplistic quietness about this Virginia town. So when NASCAR rolls in quietness fades away and the city comes alive. But don't blink. She just might miss it. History here runs deep through the heart of short track lore. on the grid walk. Michael, where are you? Roll tape. It's a beautiful morning. Oh. Martinsville, you're so beautiful. I love being here with all my fans. Oh, me, I'm a mess, uh, Brad. I'm a mess. I think you already know that. Nothing Michael. says spring to me more than coming to Martinsville. And here we are. Spring has sprung. And look at your beautiful family. The girls are so dressed so nice. Uh, it's a beautiful day. How you feeling? It is. It'd be a good day to have a good day on the racetrack. You know, we've uh, been up and down. Short tracks have kind of been our strength, Michael. And, uh, you know, we got Fastenal and uh, Bodyguard on the car. We'd love to get them to victory lane. Uh, my teammate, he's, he's been in victory lane a few times over the last year. And we've been close. So hopefully we can break through today. I hope so, too. I love your outfit. You look very beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you later. Let's see what uh, Austin Cindric's up to. Well, out of the TV booth and into the race car, how are you feeling about today's festivities? I'm a lot more confident in my abilities behind the wheel of this thing than I, than I was up there. Uh, Adam Adam makes, uh, makes us all look really good. Well, I'm telling you what, I watched that race last night, and I think you do fantastic. You've got a future. Well, thank you. Hopefully, I have more of a future in this, but uh, but yeah, hopefully, future finds us with a with a clock today. That'd be nice. That'd be fun. Have a good day. Let's see if we can find Ty Gibbs. Hello, buddy. How you doing? I know you didn't qualify like you hoped, but uh, how you feeling about today? Let's just hang out like two racers. Yeah, we're well, two racers here. Uh, you know, I feel pretty good. I, I didn't qualify well. I kind of did that to myself there, but um, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, how low front brake lock up? I guess that's kind of a more of a rookie mistake, but I made it. Now we got to come back from it. Well, have fun with your Monster Energy Toyota. Thank you. Cheers. See who we can find next. 
I see Eric Jones. Eric Jones, I'm gonna tell him, do you know that the first time I raced at Martinsville was in 1983? What were you doing then? Um, maybe a sparkle in my dad's eye, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. It might have even been a little early for that. 83, my first start was 2013 here. Well, have a good one today. I know it's gonna be a fun day. Spring has sprung, it's a beautiful day. I know you're gonna rub some fenders and have some fun. I'm gonna take this broadcast we're having right now, trackside for pre-race ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as you are able and remove your hats and veterans render a hand salute as the Bassett High School Army Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Here now to offer today's invocation, please welcome Rich Acres Christian Church Pastor Tim Hunt. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to have the freedom to be in this place on a beautiful day to watch a great race. And Father, I want to pray protection over everyone that is here. I pray for the drivers to the concession stand workers, from the NASCAR officials to the first responders, both inside and outside of the track. And Father, as we cheer for different drivers and different teams, I pray that you would unite us as a people and as a nation. And we pray this prayer in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command Seven Cities Brass Band. <laughs> Great weather for 400 laps of short track racing. Kyle Larson on the pole, Truex in row two, Logano in row three. Glad to have you with us on FS1, live from Martinsville. This track is extremely demanding, and only the best cars will be around for the end. Welcome back to NASCAR Cup Racing from Martinsville, Virginia on FS1, presented by Mother's High Performance Car Care. Since 1949, 151 NASCAR Cup races, counting today, have been contested on this tight half mile. First as a dirt track, then in the mid-50s they paved it, then they changed the corners to concrete. A lot of different surfaces, lots of different challenges, and. Uh, Tick tock, there's a grandfather clock <laughs> awaiting one of these drivers. As you heard in pre-race, this is one of uh, Clint's favorite tracks, one of Kevin's not so favorite tracks. So let me talk first with Kevin. What is job one today, if you're gonna have a chance to wind that clock? Well, I'm definitely not used to being first here, so uh, thanks for letting me go first. But job one is from practice. Hopefully you have a versatile car because this racetrack is gonna build up with rubber and you're gonna have to go below it, split it, or above it. So you need a very versatile car to go through traffic. 
All right, folks. So Clint's here to help you out. Who's going to do Finally. that the best? I think it's a Larson. Keep an eye on these 40th anniversary Hendrick cars. Larson. How about Ch uh, Chase Elliott? We haven't heard from him in a while. I think his car is very fast starting third. Denny Hamlin, last week's winner. A little bit of controversy there. We know it. Redemption time. Can it be his teammate Martin Truex get back? But this weekend, keep an eye on the fours. We finally get to talk about these fours. I hear it on Twitter all the time. People not happy about their four. Them four boys, they're here this weekend. Stuart Haas in particular. Keep an eye on those cars. Yeah, Josh Berry, good in qualifying. Ryan Priest was fast in practice. Uh, and of course, Blaney, Ryan Blaney won here the last time we were here. Well, we expect Joe the Gunner to be good too. This is one of his best racetracks that, that he's gone to through the years. And he's aggressive, he's got good track position, and look for him to be strong all day. All right, the big question How many Martinsville hot dogs will you consume today? Well, I'll, I'll try one. I can't promise you I'm going to consume the whole thing. I'm up here, Kevin. Don't be doing that to me now. Don't know more hot dogs. Lightweights, I'll tell you. Get a dozen, Andy. Let's go trackside. <laughs> Here to give the command for the Cookout 400 are two Hendrick Motorsports legends. Jeff Gordon scored nine Cup Series wins here, including his last career victory in 2015. And Jeff Bodine, who earned Hendrick Motorsports their first ever checkered flag 40 years ago here at Martinsville. They're joined today by Cookout representative Rue Reeves. Race fans, help us get this race started on three. One. Two, three, drivers, start your engine! Ready to race at Martinsville for 400 laps today on FS1. Every hero's story has a humble beginning. Every legend had to earn their stripes. You guys like me are supposed to do that! Every superstar had a dream. It's been a fairy tale season. Every home track is the start of something special. That's just a good old short track racing. Oh, a little retaliation. Holy cow! Learn more about NASCAR regional tracks near you at nascar.com slash regional. No, the eclipse is tomorrow. Bright sunshine here at Martinsville today as we get ready to race for 400 laps. Rick Hendrick Chevrolets have been so successful here at Martinsville. Nine wins each for Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. Four for Darrell Waltrip. Jeff Bodine, Dale Jr., Chase Elliott, William Byron, Alex Bowman, Kyle Larson. All have clocks to wind from this tough half mile. Jeff Bodine, Jeff Gordon taking a lap in the uh, pace car. Uh, let's visit with another Hendrick driver. This one will start on the pole. Hey, Kyle Larson, Kevin up in the booth. We cut Clint off today so we could take this serious. Tell me about <laughs> that great looking race car that you put on the pole today and what a day it is for Hendrick Motorsports. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough getting Clint not to talk. But uh, yeah, no, my my car has felt really good. It looks really good, and um, you know, it's good to be on the pole. So we got 1,500 plus people affiliated with Hendrick Motorsports there off turn two, and we would love to be celebrating with them here in a few hours. All right, man. Well, good luck today. We'll be watching. Thank you. All right, let's have a look at the Mother's High Performance Car Care starting grid for today's race. Kyle Larson is on the pole. He won this race last year, two weeks in a row, on the pole by a thousandth of a second over Bubba Wallace. Larson was the last driver to qualify to pip Wallace for the pole. Row two has Chase Elliott, 2020 Martinsville winner, and Martin Truex Jr. A lot of talk about last week. Regan Smith. Well, Mike Martin Truex Jr. has been off to a great start this season. He's the points leader, riding a five-race top ten streak currently as we come into Martinsville. But unfortunately, four of those races, he has been passed for the win, including last week when he lost at the very end of the race due to a late race caution. Talked to crew chief James Small about that. He said, listen, we don't need to look at what happened in the past. We need to look forward. We can't change it. No words need to be said. We are focused on this weekend at Martinsville and getting that first win of the year. 
Row number three, Joey Logano, top 10 in the last nine Martinsville races. And he shares it with Chase Briscoe, who's been top 10 the last four races of this season. Clint. I got you, boys. What's happening? Man, you're happening. Good racetrack for you. Top five start. Last two times you've been here. Top five starts, top five finishes. How about you? Yeah, it's definitely been a really good track for us on the 14 team. You know, every time in this next gen era we've came here, we've been really, really good. So hopefully, uh, you know, that'll correlate again today. I feel like we've done kind of everything but take the grandfather clock home. So that's what we're trying to do today. I feel like we can definitely do it. We just got to execute, you know, all day long from restarts to pit road. Uh, I think we're going to have the car to be able to be up front. We just got to put all those little details together. And, you know, that's normally what's the difference in winning and not winning is those little details. So, yeah, definitely have a, a really fast Mandarin tractor sport so try to keep this thing up front all right man i love it go get it thank you guys appreciate it row four making his first martinsville cup series start is josh berry and the guy who's won both short track races this year denny hamlin jamie Kevin Denny Hamlin has been the talk of the week after that final restart and win a week ago at Richmond. But Denny Hamlin likes it that way. He uses it as motivation, especially coming into here, Martinsville, a place he has five wins. I talked to his crew chief, Chris Gavehart. He said, we were really good yesterday in practice. We feel like we have something that can compete with Kyle Larson. Of course, Denny Hamlin looking to get his third short track win of the season. About row five, one here last fall, right down the road. He's from High Point, North Carolina's Ryan Blaney. The outside of him, Alex Bowman. He's one of those four 40th anniversary Hendrick cars, 2021 Martinsville winner. Row six, Kyle Busch, a two-time winner here. And Ross Chastain, who's been top five in half of the last four Martinsville races. As you have a look at the rest of our starting grid, let's see what's top of mind at Martinsville for our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. You know, Mike, once this driver leaves pit road for 400 laps, there's not a lot he can do inside that race car except maybe adjust the way he's driving the race car. But there is one adjustment that he can make, and I can almost promise you he'll be using it a lot. Let's go to our Toyota Camry cutaway car, and let's talk about what we call brake bias. You're going to lift the body off the car here, and you're going to see this red knob on the dash where he can adjust front and rear brake bias. The, the car actually has two complete different brake systems, one for the front, one for the rear. You see the brake pedal there in the middle. Let's pull that panel back. You've got a cylinder that controls 41. the front brakes. You've got one that controls the rear. Now, if the car is loose under braking, he can crank a little front brake into it. If it's maybe tight, not turning under braking, he can put some rear brake. That knob is red right now, guys, but more than likely, they'll be adjusting on it. The paint will be completely gone. <laughs> Well, that's a fact. We saw a lot of those um, left front tires sliding yesterday. A lot of cars loose in the corner. So that brake bias is going to get a workout today. Beautiful day at Martinsville. Temperature fighting its way up into the mid 60s here, but full sunshine and a light breeze. And under the sun, the asphalt 94 degrees. Here's your uh, Credit One Bank race analysis for today. Three stages, of course. 80, 100, 120 laps will be the distance. 30 miles an hour down pit road. Boy, that makes it awful slow and awful long from turn three all the way to turn two if you have to make a penalty drive down pit road. Yeah, and it's a tricky pit road with the corners. Same thing we've talked about at a couple places uh, with, the, with the corner speeds being so far up. You see Kyle Larson looking at that first pit stall, and you can... We saw Ryan Priest make that mistake. Yes. He tried to go all the way to that yellow line, but this is definitely not as big of an advantage in, in what is actually pit stall two, not pit stall one. Exactly. Yeah, that's why it's not an advantage so much, Kevin, is they've actually taken, NASCAR's taken that number one stall out of the equation. And just like you said, the 41 car of Ryan Priest actually had that stall, drove straight out and got caught speeding. You can see the difference right there. That stall is not in existence. When he goes out, you have to be careful. He's got to be back down to pit road speed before he gets to that line, whereas before, when you had that number one box, you just powered straight out wide open. Well, it's still where I would prefer to be because it's less chaotic, and if you're running good, you can get there first. But you see all these speed lines, and in these in these corners here on both ends, you got to go up a couple miles an hour, uh, some, some different readings at the start-finish line from a mile per hour. Tricky pit road just because it's so slow, but you have to be right on the limit in order to gain the time that you need. So uh, a lot of work on the driver's shoulders again this week on pit road. 
the commit box at the entry to turn three on the exit of pit road at I want turn to go two. Left here. Well, Ryan Blaney radio. Hey everybody. Doing all I can for you. Keep this thing clean. Let you know what I need. Try to get to the clock. Good luck, fellas. Be safe. That's the calmest he'll be today. That's exactly what I was going <laughs> to say. Boy, his radio changes so much. You hear him do an interview, folks, and I'm telling you, every now and then that thing just goes haywire inside that car. It gets very loud and very, uh, very aggressive. Yeah. You, <laughs> you, you, uh, as soon as this green flag drops, the switch flips and uh, the alter ego comes. Uh, comes Chin strap on. gets tight. That's right. <laughs> Cut off some of that oxygen to the brain. Blaney and Austin Sindrick both, I thought, did a great job last night on the Xfinity race with Adam Alexander. And we're ready to race for 400 laps at Martinsville. Green flag. The cookout 400 is underway. Oh my gosh, Kevin, that was definitely in started the restart zone. I don't want to hear anything more about it. Well, remember, Clint, the flag does start the race. <laughs> I don't care. It was in the zone. Mark Shrek slid way up the racetrack, almost got three wide right there. Yeah, that racetrack's been walked on, run on, cleaned up, and that outside groove won't be as good this first run as it, as it typically is. And, you know, if you get hung up there in the wrong position or your car's not handling good, it's tough to get down to the bottom. And sometimes you got to force yourself down to, to find a hole if there is one. But right now there is no hole. And the longer Joey Logano waits, the longer that line will get of cars bumper to bumper, and the harder it will be to go down. And he's trying to get down. All of a sudden, you got Josh Berry filling that forward in the inside. Oh, he got clear. I think Josh. Logano gets in there. line. They're in sixth. Yeah, and that's really what stacks all these guys up. When when Logano goes down low like that, he slows up the corner more than he wants to. And Josh Berry had to slow up, which in turn checks every car in lineup, which creates that accordion effect of usually bumpers hitting bumpers. Now note how clean that concrete is in the corners. We're above 60 degrees, so the track should take rubber today. It certainly did yesterday in practice and qualifying very fast, actually. A lot more than Kevin and I thought. I mean, you can already see that rubber getting laid down in three and four from here. Well, we've had a view. Yeah, we've had a truck race. We've had a, an Xfinity race. We've had practices. And like you said, Clint, that, that track uh, had plenty of rubber on it yesterday, and it's going to rubber up fast. It's, all right, so what does that mean? As it does that, guys, it gets very slick. First of all, you start losing the front wheels, and all of a sudden, as soon as it catches up, now you, you've spun the tires up off. You kind of get a push, snap loose sensation. Double file from 14th on back here. Larson half a second up on Bubba Wallace. Column at the front. Not so common to rear. <laughs> no. <laughs> Typical Martinsville. Yeah, and that, that won't last long because everything that, that is happening in the back of the field just stacks these guys up, and the lap times get slower and slower, um, and the front of the field is going to catch the back of the field before long. That's exactly right. And you, you can run, but you can't hide at a track like this. There's no place to go. Maybe for 15, 20, 30 laps here, next thing you know, you're mired in traffic, and all that ground you gained on the second-place car, the car behind you, has uh, narrowed up as you're trying to navigate traffic. That's what we've been talking about. Kevin, time and time again in that pre-race show, you told me a maneuverable car. You gotta have a maneuverable car so you can move around and make passes, whether yeah. that's a lap car or for position. Yeah, and right now, everybody wants to be on the bottom of the racetrack until that rubber really gets thick and the cars start to slide around on the entry and push in the middle with the front end sliding up the racetrack. Uh, you already saw Kyle Larson kind of up the racetrack right there, starting to move around a little bit to just have a good idea of how his car feels and what his best option is on the racetrack. World's fastest conveyor belt all the way back to Carson Hosevar uh, in 25th place. On the outside, everybody in front of him is single file logging laps, but yeah, they're, they're still fighting for position out back here. Well, this is a relatively short stage of only 80 laps, and uh, so you've, you've got to go. You don't really get a great idea of what your car is doing until you get to a lap, about lap 30, 40, 50, somewhere in there, and that's where you really start to understand, and we expect the green flag runs to go. I'm already seeing cars having to straddle this rubber down in three and four, in particular your leader right there with Larson. You see Truex behind him. They're moving up. Took a shot from the rear of Logano. I think he's in the way. Truex early uh, struggles 
told us in the in the uh, pre race there Kevin that he made some adjustments on his car overnight didn't like it well it looks like Logano is a little bit better through the center of the corner you'll see him roll up right to the center and through the center of the corner and that's just uh, see right there that's just Martin having to wait on the car to turn and, and late to the throttle all right let's get an update on tricks from Regan Smith well, Kevin, you're exactly right. That's what Martin Truex just told the team. They fought tight in practice yesterday, made all those adjustments overnight, but the report from Martin already, it is tight still, just like what he was battling yesterday in the middle. Yeah, you see that left front tire on the 19 car almost lock up there into, into turn three, and that tells you he's doing everything he can as long as he can to try to slow the car down and get it closer to that curb, but he just can't make it to the curb uh, early center there. Well, he was... Torian was trying to dime in the corner a little bit and moving around, and that's when Logano drove right back to his bumper. But look how much faster Joey can roll to him with speed. Well, in the early days of this sport, the bumpers were chrome plated steel, and this is the place the phrase the chrome horn was invented. You get up to somebody in mid corner, you're faster than them off, you're going to give them a little boot saying, I'm here, give me room. You know why you use that, Mike? Because it you works. can. <laughs> no, because it works. <laughs> Jamie. Well, Mike, we've been talking about what a big race this is for Hendrick Motorsports. Three of their four cars qualified top 10. That one right there, the 24, did not. He qualified 18. His crew chief, Rudy Fugel, told me they just simply missed it. But despite that, a lot of positive comments about the handling of that race car. They're hopeful they're going to have a long green flag here. They can make up positions. So far, he's up three. Well, you see him hammer the back bumper right there, that two car. Austin Sendrick is like, hey man, I'm I'm way faster than you. See Austin really slowing the car down in the middle of the corner. There he goes. I think these Hendrick cars are obviously going to be hard to handle. I mean, Rick brought uh, four of them, and all four of them are very fast. Everybody knew in that race shop this one means business. David Starr. Part timer racing for Carl Long, first car to go a lap down here at 17, 18 laps now. Up in turn number two, Hendrick Motorsports celebrating 40 years. Lots of ruby red uh, on those t shirts and banners as they celebrate here at Martinsville with their driver, Kyle Larson, out front. Back to the cookout 400 on FS1. Let's get today's Coors Light race strategy. Well, Mike, Martinsville's a place where you better have a strategy, but you better be smart enough to adjust it as well. If the caution comes out near the end of stage one or stage two and you're way back in the pack, maybe stay out. Change this right side tires. It worked out for a couple of drivers last year, and he scored stage points. The final stage, 220 laps. Split the stage. Now, that can be risky if that caution comes out, but crew chiefs say this is the best way to go. And once you get to about 50 laps to go, if you're up at the front and the caution comes out late in the race, stay out or change this right side tires. Last year, Larson, the winner, right sides. Logano finished second, actually stayed out. Thanks, Larry Mack. With Kyle Larson in heavy traffic, Hendrick Chevy's running first, third, 11th, and 13th in their anniversary race. Over the last seven races, all four of the Hendrick drivers have won here. It's a really special weekend. I know it means a lot to him and, and Linda both. Cool to be a small part of it, you know, have, have added to the, the trophy collection a little bit. All four of us drivers hope to make it a memorable night uh, once again for, for Rick and Linda and, and everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, learning a lot about the, the different aspects of the of the company and, and all the different people affected, so it's it's a big deal. Over 1,500 present and former Hendrick employees and their families here to witness this 40th anniversary race from outside turn number two. Kyle Larson's had a lot of race traffic to deal with. He's already put six cars one lap down. That's what I love about Martinsville. And Kevin, you told us you got to have a maneuverable car. And that what I see in this is Larson being able to inch a little bit further and further away from Bubba Wallace. That being said, his teammate, 
Chase Elliott right there and Chase Briscoe in the 14, both catching them cars. That nine car's fast today, folks. Yeah, we noticed the nine car of Chase Elliott really moving around, had a big diamond, would cut it down low on the exit of the corner, just trying to feel his car out before he got to traffic. But Kyle Larson is picking him up and putting down. He's definitely putting the cars down that don't have any versatility. He's led all 33 laps today. Uh, Kyle Larson that is and he leads the league in laps led this season. Really got through that lap traffic good put some distance between him and second place you can see Bubba back there. Wallace one point six back and just the look on his face yesterday after losing the pole by one one thousandth of a second but that was not the ironic part it's like him yeah the guy I spun out with a lap and a half to go last Sunday accidentally him he beats me for the pole yes yes indeed they this, can't get away from one another well this, and this sport just has a, a funny way of, of those things happening you spin a guy out and the next week you're riding around it in the truck with, with him and <laughs> you have no choice but to talk to him and yesterday we saw that in qualifying getting beat by one one thousandths of a second uh, for, for the pole Kyle Larson beating Bubba Wallace so that's just the way this deal goes you, you've got to you've got to learn to to live with that because it won't be the last time there was nothing worse than riding in the back of them trucks and driver intros with the guy that you wrecked the week before you like uh, hey hey man hey, it's the most awkward conversation you'll ever have so here's William Byron who is up six spots since the start of this race about to pass Alex Bowman for 11. Or is he? Yeah, well, getting to them and passing them are just two different things with how close these cars are at Martinsville, the shifting and uh, the tight quarters of, of the corner and everything that goes with this track. It just makes it tough. But you see through the center of the corner, William Byron is just better. It just was so reminiscent. How many times have we seen that 48 24 battle it out on this racetrack? Whoa. Whoa. Performance cam showing Ryan Blaney shifting. We also show him. Showed him getting a handful yeah. of wheel right there up off the corner. Larry Mack. Yeah, you see Denny Hamlin there in the 11 car. I talked to his crew chief, Chris Gabehart, a couple of days ago, and he said one of the challenges in the race versus practice is you never can duplicate in practice what you see in the race. You guys have talked about the rubber going down. When you only have half the field out there practicing, you don't get that much down. But, guys, what I'm seeing already, it brings back nightmares for my 18 years as a crew chief. <laughs> Same thing. Won't turn the middle, can't put the power down. Watch Briscoe look to the inside of Chase Elliott. Took advantage of some lap traffic chase was having trouble with them and the other chase bounced on it third place at stake here yeah and briscoe just can't finish the corner he can't get the the entry the arc on the entry and finish the corner on the exit to put the throttle down like he needs to to complete the pass showed it right there on display got loose up off with a lot of wheel in it chase Elliott drove back into the position ryan blaney he's going backwards saw him get a handful of wheel off of off of turn two and you know, a lot of times you'll get tight to the center of the corner and then you have a bunch of wheel on the exit of the corner and it'll slide. Corey LaJoy did not want to give up being on the lead lap here. Regan. We guys talk about Ryan Blaney, the report to the team from Ryan. He is very tight in the middle, but extremely loose off of the corners. No drive in that number 12 car right now. Keep in mind, last year's winner here, his crew chief, Jonathan Hassler, told me he did not want to be in a situation where he had to work on the middle early on in this race because last time we were here, the top is where they made all their hay later on in the race. All right. That blue flag is the passing flag. It means there's a faster car behind you. Give way. Yeah, and I don't even know why we have the blue flag anymore. <laughs> does, they, they don't even use it. Here's your Xfinity fastest lap of the Wallace. 2023. Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Martin Truex, Chase Briscoe. All running in the top five. Track temperatures, hottest they've been all weekend. 113 degrees in the full sun. Well, you see Martin Truex, you you pointed it out, Clint. You see Chase Chase Briscoe lay the door to uh, Austin Dillon right there. Uh, Austin having a tough start to the race, going a lap down already. Well, because of Chase's inability to be able to finish the corner, he was having trouble with Austin Dillon on his outside. Truex Jr. drove right to his bumper. Truex is on a roll. And that's why on we talk move. about that's why we talk about traffic so much. When you can't 
uh, when you're stuck to one lane and you need that whole entry and that whole exit to go through lap traffic, that's when you start getting in trouble and losing a bunch of time uh, with, with, to the cars that can be versatile and dime in the corner and do different things with their car than just one line. New crew chief for Austin Dillon this week, Justin Alexander back on the box, uh, replacing Keith Rodden, who takes on a wider management role with the team. Uh, after disagreements over strategy the last few weeks, they've made that change. 33 laps to go in stage one. Kyle Larson has led them all from Bubba Wallace, Chase Elliott, and Chase Briscoe. Unbelievable! Have you ever seen anything like that? Do we have your attention yet? Is this the new face of the great American race? Is this how you dance on the razor's edge? How you find a diamond in the desert. How you beat the heat. Will this gladiator be the last one standing? Who's going to attack from the rest of the pack? Let's do it. Last question. Are you not entertained? We believe in the two-minute drill and goal line stands. We believe in beer snakes, the giddy-up, and whatever this guy's doing. We believe in speed and power, and that nothing is more dangerous than a man with a dream. We believe in football. The United Football League, Saturday, Memphis, Birmingham, on Fox. Next Saturday, FS1 is headed for Texas for racing and for this bitter rivalry. Corey Seager and the reigning champion Rangers battle Jose Altuve and the Astros at 4 Eastern on FS1 Fox Saturday Baseball. Welcome back to Martinsville, where our aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear more driven. Kyle Larson continuing to lead. He's now opened it up in traffic by 1.8 seconds over Bubba Wallace. Well, you really see him starting to move around uh, through turns one and two right there. Go through three and four and see Larson wrapping the bottom, but you see this. This right over here, this rubber right there is starting to get caked up. It's starting to get choppy through there. And when I say choppy, you'll go in there and it'll just grab the right front tire and that car will take off up the racetrack and it'll take you way around the corner and still not rotate. And then it'll, when you finally get it to grip and uh, rotate out of the corner, then it snaps the back of the car. So it's, see Kyle Larson starting to move up. You got to do something to move around that rubber in the middle of the corner so that you can make the car turn and rotate correctly. Seventh place here. Denny Hamlin, Josh Berry, William Byron. And that struggle right there is what separates the men from the boys in this deal. If you can do that, you can maneuver around and pass cars like you were talking about, Kevin. If you can't, you need to get in there and, and make an adjustment and pray those guys can help you. Well, one guy who's made some pretty good ground right there, William Byron. He's, he's driven from, a, I think, a little further back in the field than most, and he's made his way towards the front. He's up. Ten he's spots. up several spots, yeah. Thank started, you, Mike. Started 18. I, I couldn't spit that out there. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and that's a great feeling at the beginning of this race, Clint, when you can wrap that curb longer than everybody else, and everybody else is just dead slow through the middle of the corner with their right front tire stuck, and then they move up and still can't get the front to turn, and then they have to go back through the rubber. It's nice when you can wrap that curb as long as possible. Right along with Christopher Bell right here. Man, he is off the pace, struggling to the race car. I've watched him slip and slide around in that rubber you speak of. Way up the racetrack a couple times. He is definitely wanting some adjustments. Look look at this rubber, Clint. Ready. Look at this rubber when he goes into the corner right here. As you get right about here, you start to see that rubber start to get choppy. See where it's starting to cake up right there. You can see him straddling, doing whatever he can do to not put that right front tire in it. Nice shots from the Toyota cam on board Christopher Bell. Kyle Larson has led every lap so far, all 62 of them. His crew chief, Cliff Daniels, allowed us to sit in on the team's morning meeting. Enjoy the moment. Don't, don't let that get lost on you today. Literally right outside of our pit stall is 1,500 Hendrick Motorsports employees and families and all the people that you know are here to cheer us on. Whoever's been in pit stall one the last four or five races here has sped. Let the stall and the pit crew do the work. Right now, if a caution comes out at lap 40, I don't know if we're going to stay. I don't know if we're taking rights. I don't know if we're taking four. I really don't know. We're just going to have to observe you know, the track, the rubber content. Here we go, team. Ah! Let's have a great day.
I love that advice, Clint. Enjoy that moment. When you've got, I always enjoyed when there was more people watching, more pressure on you. Um, just take that moment, and because when you succeed in those moments, it is so gratifying. And I don't even know how to explain it to people. Well, the only moment that I heard Cliff Daniels say that I don't believe is he doesn't know. That man is sharp, and he always has a plan. Well, he sounded like somebody told him that pit stall one has not won a race at Martinsville in 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Well, if he has anything to do with it, that's going to change. Well, I, I really, really like the way that this race has started. It couldn't have started better uh, for Kyle Larson. And you well, see, he started on the pole. Kid. Yeah, and, and he's he's got the, the rich get richer, right? He's got the first <laughs> pit stall. He's got the best track position. He's got everything. But I've seen a lot of cars go backwards as 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 we start this race, and he's not one of them. He's put 11 cars one lap down already in the first 67 laps of this race. Well, he's going to have to deal with this 11 car at some point. And the 24. Six both place those, Yeah, both of those cars are making their way through the field. Coming up on David Starr, three laps down in the 66. Justin Haley has gone two down in the 51. Well, and this is really going to bite Denny Hamlin right here because he's going to get stuck behind David Starr unless he doesn't move up. But you see William Byron not give him any space to try to pick, use him as a pick. Uh, and this is going to get tight. Oh, then he has to move him up out of the way. Byron struggled here last fall. He only ran five laps in a top 10 position, finished 13th. How many times you've been here, done that? Come here, run right up in the front, almost win the race, come back the next time, felt like all the tires were flying. Yeah, what did you guys do to this thing? Yeah. It's literally the same car with the same setup, Clint. I don't know what to tell you. Ten to go in stage one this time by Jamie. Well, it's amazing how good Kyle Larson has been at this track the last few times. Yet he told me before he got in the car, this place just is opposite of what he grew up doing. He said you have to slow down to go fast here, and that's not what you do in dirt racing. In the meantime, he's led every lap so far, and they told him do whatever is comfortable. Guys around you, behind you, are moving around, so find your comfort zone. All right, now right side of the screen. Logano and Hamlin are going to try to pin Byron who drops in line because there's a lap car ahead on the bottom. Uh, they were going to go to the top side but now you got Austin Dillon and Kaz Grala, who's all they're both already one down just in front of this group. Traffic is a constant here. It is a constant and that's why we've been stressing so much between the traffic and the rubber on the racetrack. It is so important to have a versatile car and be able to do something different in the corner than everybody else. Well, they've lapped all the way up to 26th place already, 25th. Pretty amazing. Man, they're picking them up, putting them down fast here. Yeah, and one of those cars that they lapped is Chris Busher. And I'm I'm really surprised. And Clint, we were talking um, before the show, just the six and the seventeen just have not run like they like they did last year. And I don't know what they're missing this year compared to that at some of these racetracks where we really expect them to run strong. But that's a that's a huge surprise as we're on board with the build submarines uh, onboard camera. And Chris Joe, Busher. Joey Logano and Denny Hamlin have been very patient with Austin Dillon and I thought patience was about to run out there but Logano just can't seem to get to the bumper of the three and he can't seem to get past Kaz Grala. Well it's running out of patience behind him too. I saw Denny Hamlin lay the bumper to Joey Logano twice now and it's because of the pressure behind him. William Byron Josh Berry right on his heels. Well when those cars are side by side it, it, it makes it even worse because the air in, in front of them just um, is not as good when those cars are side by side like that and Joey Logano's backing up and he's stacking the whole lane up. Man I love the move I saw about Josh Berry in that four car went way outside entered way high cross back over got a low and straight run up off the corner off of two moving around doing what they're not. Well this can only last another three laps will be at the end of stage one. Josh Berry a lot of success here at Martinsville Xfinity car um, late model stock cars so much success around here in the southeast in the late models. This Expect rubber is giving these guys fits. They're slipping and sliding everywhere. Well, you got to make some good adjustments because as you've seen in this stage, it goes by really quick and you got to you got to get them right because you might not get many chances to work on it. Larry. 
You know, one of the quickest cars the last eight or ten laps is Bubba Wallace in that 23. And, Kevin, you and Clint were talking about this yesterday. What I like what I'm seeing with this 23 car, he uses the brake, but he gets off. He lets the car roll through the middle without using a lot of brake. He's rolling right to the leader of Kyle Larson, too. Oh, I man. told you the patience is running out back yep. there. That, that isn't the first time. Now, that's at seventh place as we come to the last lap of stage one. And we got a race. Yes, we do. The win to this stage. Bubba Wallace is running all the way back down. He's under him. About had him. There's the green and white checkers. And Kyle Larson gets his first ever stage win at Martinsville. His fourth of the season. He leads all drivers in that category. As the top ten come across the line and the caution will wave. Kyle Larson leads all 80 laps in stage one. Welcome back to NASCAR Cup Racing from Martinsville on FS1, presented by Mother's High Performance Car Care. Jamie Little. Well, Mike, the 14 team has been one of the best on pit road this year. Top five for four tire stops, some of the fastest stops of the year. So let's say hello to Chase Briscoe's team. Shane Papala, front tire changer. I've been changing tires for 16 years. The 2017 Daytona 500 champion, back-to-back -back Brickyard champ in 19 and 20, 2023 Xfinity champion, and I wouldn't be here without my loving support of my wife and son, Amy and Lucas. Thank you. I'm Dakota Ratcliffe. I'm the rear tire changer. This is my sixth season in the sport, and I'm your 2023 Xfinity Series champion. John Brunel, tire carrier, 2015 Most Valuable Pit Crew, 2017 Daytona 500 winner, father of three, and the sexiest man on pit road with bald head. Dylan Moser, nickname is Moose, Jackman, played football at Wingate University, and I made Sports Center top 10. Corey Coppolo, Bueller, fifth year in the sport, winner at Phoenix in 2022, former Davis and defense lineman. <laughs> he nailed it. Yes, he did. <laughs> well done. Richard Boswell, the second, is the crew chief for Chase Briscoe from Friendship, Maryland. Third season as Cup Crew Chief and second with Briscoe. Oh, local legend, Dickie Boswell's boy. Yeah. Miss that man. Here we oh, go. Pit road's open. A long way around for the leaders. Here's Regan. We just met Chase Briscoe's team. They get their first chance to go to work today right now. Right now, the 14 car sliding the right rear the entire run. Couldn't get the power down. The 19 of Martin Truex Jr., his car is just extremely tight through the rubber. It's making it worse as the rubber goes down on the racetrack, causing it to snap loose off. Jamie? For Bubba Wallace, a really good first stage. He's been pretty good. No changes here. The five. He's led every single lap so far for Kyle Larson. He says, my car is good. I just got stuck behind those guys. They held me up. Just air pressure adjustment for Larson. Ricky Stenhouse got turned getting into his pit stall. And because the left rear wheel is outside the stall, he cannot do the stop. Has to back up, turn it around. Not once, but twice. And oh, no. Oh. Wedge wrench. He'll be coming back down. Todd Gillen. Let's dial up, Bubba. Hey, Bubba Wallace, it's Boy and the Boys up in the booth. You got me? What up, Doc? Man, you are. Old five car, that leader was getting really big in that windshield at the end of that run. About the same as last week, so I bailed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this car's really good, so I just appreciate everybody. On this 23 team, we've been working really hard just to get our rhythm back, get our mojo back from the beginning of the season. So it's a long way to go, but it's nice to be fast. So see what we can do here. All right, man, keep it up. Thanks for the time. Second top five in a stage here for Bubba Wallace. Now you'll see Ricky Stenhouse, the orange car, come in. And boy, he got turned around. He was also too fast entering. Todd Gilliland removing equipment from the pit. The wedge wrench, and uh, they came back, took it out, and made the adjustment. Ryan Blaney's crewman tried to make the same adjustment, but never got the wedge wrench in. Yay! As you see, 
Well, that's a good little sidestep, though, huh? A little slip and slide. Then uh, Kyle Busch had an issue with a fuel can. It was still attached when he took off, but since it came off in the box, no penalty. Stenhouse too fast entering. Gilliland removing equipment. Ryan Blaney had to make a second stop to get the adjustment and also because the left rear lug nut was not tight. Yeah and Chase Briscoe he's going to be salty with his crew too because of uh, the loss in positions and it's so important to be able to keep the track position here if you want to have a chance to win this race. Salty huh his teammate uh, Josh Berry lost a couple spots as well I think he come in ninth well. Yeah he's 11th now. Chris Buescher got the free pass. He was the first car one lap down. So on the choose, Larson to the outside, Logano inside. They're in row number one. Uh, Chase Elliott, and it was off Chase's front bumper that Ricky Stenhouse spun, trying to get into his pit. Chase on the outside of Bubba Wallace for row two for the restart. What do you think about these two tires? Well, we're about to find out. I never, I never liked two tires, no, sir. ever. But track position is sometimes king, so we're going to find out which one's better, tires or track position. Restart zone on the front straightaway begins here. They're on it deep in the box. Oh, and because, we go. because of that, Larson spun the tires big time on the outside. Logano got him. As much as we talked about last week's restart with Denny Hamlin, that was a great use of the box, uh, the restart box there by Joey Logano to stack him up. And Larson spun the tires and lost another spot on the restart. Going to lose maybe another one to Denny Hamlin now. And these are the types of situations like Joey Logano putting on two tires, right? So we have Kyle Larson who had led and dominated the race, had control of the race, he lost control. Now spins the tires, loses a spot on the restart, now battling with, with Denny Hamlin to just keep third. And these are the types of things that change the complexion of the race just because of the track position. Larson almost had Hamlin cleared on the front straightaway, but Denny sent it in. Well, you see Larson try to keep him pinned down as much as possible on the exit of the corner for just what we talked about earlier. You see Hamlin try to push him up in the middle of the corner so he can get a little better angle off the corner that time and drive up off the corner, and he's halfway home. And now he's in trouble because they're stacking up behind him. Those guys are his teammates. Well, that worked out. Chase Elliott got a little bit loose, filled that gap finally. Martin Truex up on the outside of Bowman. That's for eighth place. With Kyle Busch right behind, and Truex uh, finds a spot to the inside. Yeah, and it's not something that I ever like to do, but it's something that you have to do here at Martinsville. You have to force yourself down the racetrack uh, when, when you have a gap, and, and that's what you saw Martin Truex do right there, and that stacks those lines up and creates opportunities for somebody to get spun out or something to happen, but you have to be aggressive. I cannot believe these two tires are holding on like this. I mean, I know it won't hold on to that lead for long. I mean, you see Bubba Wallace getting closer and closer to him. But if you're going to have that and play that that call, you're going to have to make sure you leave uh, uh, Exeter two in the lead. And that's exactly what Logano did. He got a good jump on the restart, beat Larson, caused him to spin the tires, got that clean air track position. If he hadn't have done that and got mired in traffic at the deficit of two tires, he'd have been in trouble. Well, Joey Logano is a tough pass. And He's going to he's going to try to keep that lead as long as possible to because he knows if he gets uh, in traffic that his handling conditions are going to get worse. So whether he has the best car or not. Boy look at this scrum back here. Uh, that was John Hunter Nemechek to the inside. There he is. I want to go back, back to Blaney back to Logano for just a second. Twenty laps into this stage already. I'm sold. It gets down to push come to shove at the end of this race and you need to get some track position everybody's going to look at two tires yeah I'm not I'm not sold quite yet I'm uh, just saying for the end of the race not it, right now no I, I hear you there that that's good because I think that um, this this could go south for him pretty quick if he gets passed well let's ask our crew chief Larry Mack what do you think of this two tire play if you're going to try it this is a time to try it. and I guarantee you there's about 36 other crew chiefs that's watching what's going on my, my only concern with them doing it one they were the only one that did it and knowing that this is basically an 80 something lap run and in this stage should we go caution free that was my biggest concern not so much the run in stage one but how many laps to the end of stage two so Logano came into the pits sixth 
and came out with the lead with two tires. Well, it, it immediately changed the complexion of the race. It sure did. Regan? Well, Mike, normally we have to worry about braking when we come to, Morris, or to Martinsville. Unfortunately for Daniel Suarez, he has actually got an issue with the throttle sticking a little bit right now. Reported it to the team under the caution flag. They're keeping an eye on that. Jamie? Well, Regan, the guys were talking about the 22 and the decision to take right sides. Paul Wolf told me that that was probably going to be their play. He was very comfortable leaving Joey out there on older left side tires. He said this tire is reacting like it did here in the fall, and they were really good. They were happy with the setup yesterday. He evolved it just a little bit, but so far so good as the 22 continues to lead. Well, it looks like Joey's driving away from, from Bubba a little bit right now. Where this is really going to come into play is when he catches the back of the field and that's really we're going to get a read on what Joey Logano's car is is going to do on two tires. Well it tells me that the left sides aren't wearing much. I mean, we're now we're approaching 30 laps into this stage and just like I just heard you say he's getting away from second place Bubba Wallace. Ryan Blaney here's what happens when you have to make a second pit stop under caution. You end up back here racing with cars that are a lap down trying to fight your way back to the front Blaney now 23rd he has only gained one position and I bet his radio is not as calm as it was to start the race certainly not. Well Clint you're right I don't I don't say that very often but. You're right about this Joey Logano car and the track position and everything that they've got going on with the two tires. I mean it is it has worked out a lot better than I thought it was going to. Well all the things that old tires show right where like four drive off immediately goes away on, on older tires that has a, all those ingredients it's taking off it has four drive what's wrong with Christopher Bell I got right. smoke because he got a tire down. looks like a right front flat. Oh, it's broke. Tie rod is broke somehow. Put right on it. I well, think it's. I think it's just got a flat. Well, it's turned way to the right, but it may have just been the carcass that's hung out there on the right side of the car. The tire was definitely hung way out to the right. Bell was running 21st on the lead lap. He makes it to pit road. It's broke. Tie yeah. rods. Something's broke in it. If the wheel broke. The wheel might be broke. No, it's oh. a tie rod. You're. I mean, you're spot on twice. Hey man, say my first rodeo cowboy. I, you were always you were always really good here, but you're on it today. Good job. Uh, so what I said was that right front is broke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh trouble. You're not gonna get back from that one. That ain't oh. just a flat tire fix. Yeah, that big trouble for him. It, look at the right rear. It's hit as well. He's hit something pretty solid. Another car. Yeah, that or it either. And caution is out for debris. Likely from Christopher Bell, we're not sure. Uh, a debris caution is not charged to a particular driver. So at lap 112, yellow flag waves for debris with 25 cars on the lead lap, the last of which is Ricky Stenhouse. Looks like uh, Noah Gregson is in position for the free pass. And yeah, that's really odd on, on Christopher Bell's car. We'll go back and see if we can find some footage of what actually happened to Christopher Bell, but uh, there's no wall marks. It's on the inside of somebody's car. I mean, you can tell by, just like you said, looking at his right rear, he was hitting somebody. I'm looking in door. And uh, no visible marks on the bodywork. That's an odd one. But, but the tires were messed up. I, what I was saying is he's been in the inside of somebody's, uh, you know, left left door, wheel to wheel hard. All right, Larry Mack, uh, we've seen two tires for it to work well. We've seen four tires. What this time? Well, Mike, we've only run 19 laps, and we have 25 drivers on the lead lap. I think Joey Logano and Paul Wolf, their bet's made right now, only going 19 laps there. But if you're back in the pack like his teammate Ryan Blaney, Chris Buescher that maybe just got the free pass, if nothing else, come and make more adjustments on this race car. But I think Joey Logano on his 22 has proved that two tires is not bad. One advantage he has, he picks the throttle up sooner and is able to be much smoother with it right now. Thanks, Larry. 
25 cars on the lead lap. Eric Jones will come in. Along with a couple of others, including Ryan Blaney, toward the tail end of the lead lap. Under caution for the second time today. Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer have both seen success at Martinsville Speedway. Getting set for the restart at 118 laps. Joey Logano, Bubba Wallace up on the front row. Hamlin and Larson. Elliott and Bowman. Track position, I'm sold. It is king today. And we are back to green. Logano mixing it up. Took off early in the zone that time. That's how you're supposed to do it. Look at Danny Hamlin. Inside of Wallace for second. He has found the front, been dominant on these short tracks. You got all four Hendrick cars behind him, all four racing each other for position. How about that for a photo shoot? Rick wants them ahead of them, though. He yeah. doesn't want them <laughs> racing each other for fourth. Fourth on back. Joey Logano out front. Uh, today is also a milestone for the captain, Roger Penske. Team Penske. 6,000 races across all disciplines worldwide. This is their 6,000th race. Logano trying to make it a memorable one for Roger Penske. Well, he needs to make sure he keeps that guy happy in that 22 car because that team has definitely turned the corner the last couple weeks. And Paul Wolf, a big part of that. We hear him talk about North Wilkesboro test and what they found at it. Uh, carried that over to Richmond. Uh, we talk about how much they struggled, but it's also uh, takes two veterans like that to be able to turn something around that quick. It looks to me like what they found at that tire test is they don't matter. They put them two tires on, stayed in front of this field, chasing that clean air, track position. Watch over the Bass Pro Shops camera on board Martin Truex chasing uh, Josh Berry there for 10th. And just ahead of Tyler Reddick and Kyle Busch side by side. Penalties on uh, that round of pit stops. Uh, Josh Williams and David Starr too fast on pit road. Have some uh, Chase Briscoe radio. Briscoe currently eighth. He's not wrong. No, he's that. not. You saw Larson dominate this race. Now you got a guy on two tires out there with Logano just driving off from him again. Um, you know, if you're Larson, even Chase Elliott, man, I'm very impressed with Chase Elliott today. They got to go through Denny Hamlin and then Denny Hamlin's own uh, car of Bubba Wallace. Putting Denny Hamlin in front of those cars is going to be a tall order getting around him. And Blaney's still mired in traffic as a result of that double stop on the previous caution. Still trying to crack the top 20. Yeah, and his car was was terrible on the on the first round. They they actually took the time to come back in and and make the adjustment on the car because they knew they had to do something to make it better. But he's definitely passed some cars and moving forward. He goes around Brad Keselowski there. Who we talked about expecting to run better. And now you see Chris Buescher on the outside of Brad Keselowski. These cars were both good on all the short tracks last year. They've been OK at a couple places at Bristol and Richmond, but not good here today. Heavy traffic right there. Zane Smith trying to stay on the lead lap there in that pack. There's one, two, three. Logano, Wallace, Hamlin. I can't say it enough. 52 laps were in the, the stage on two lap tires with that 22 car. Yeah, and, and the other thing that this does, Clint, this this puts a lot of pressure on the rest of the teams to do two tires. Uh, so I, I'm. This strategy is going to really mix this field up on the on the next pit stop. It takes me back to listen to Cliff Daniels. I thought he was teasing a little bit just because the cameras are on. I don't know what we're going to do. Two tires could be two tires, no tires, four tires. He wasn't kidding. And no. he knew that ahead of time. And I think that answer or that question has been answered with this 22 car. Paul Wolf making that call. This is the most laps Joey Logano has led on a non drafting track 
since Phoenix in 2022 when he won the cup championship. And how about Ford? We haven't talked about them much this year. They've been beat up pretty bad. That Ford Mustang up front, their day is looking good. Well, and we expect it. We expect Joey Logano to run good here. We expect Joey Logano to run good at Richmond. Well, we expect him to run good everywhere, and they expect the same thing. And they they have definitely struggled uh, until Richmond last week after the first two super speedway races. So Logano in a Ford out front, Bubba Wallace second, a Ford Toyota half a second back, Denny Hamlin one second off the lead in third for Toyota, and then the four Hendrick cars in a row, Larson, Elliott, Bowman, and Byron, fourth through seventh. Here's Michael Waltrip. Thanks, guys. I'm up here on the Hendrick Motorsports suite with over 1,500 of their employees, the beautiful ruby red shirts everywhere. This is Frank Edwards. He was here in 1984 for that magical win back then. It's good to see you, sir. How you been? Been doing just great. It's been uh, a lot of fun being here today. I told them I've done this for a long time, but this is the first time I ever watched a race at Martinsville as a spectator. I was always in, kind of little, involved in it a little bit, but uh, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the day, and this is the same hat I wore when Bodine won the first race right here in 84. How about that? The same hat. Is that awesome? It's so much fun being up here with the friends and family. I remember Frank Edwards when he started with a Rick Hendrick who came down from Palmer Springs, Virginia, down to Charlotte to sell cars, ended up owning a dealership, which then became more dealerships, uh, drag raced boats, and then found his way to NASCAR, formed a team, almost went out of business, but his crew chief, Harry Hyde, said, Rick, the car is ready. The boys want to go. Jeff wants to race. Martinsville's one of his best tracks. Just let us go to Martinsville. Don't shut us down. And Rick said, all right, go to Martinsville. And the rest is history. That Bodie drag race is in the, the Heritage Center, his uh, museum down there. He took me through that one day. What a neat place that is. What a life. What a story. Here's a guy we hadn't talked about much on Monster Energy on board there. Ty Gibbs boy Harrison Burton has been getting bounced around uh, they're off the bumper of John Hunter Nemechek Noah Whoa. Gregson trying to get by and it's still happening Hold Justin on Haley and Kaz Grala that's a pinball I think he bounced off four cars right there, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, I was actually watching that and it wasn't over yet because Corey LaJoy put him three wide and it continued for two more laps that's hitting for the cycle but not in a good way no he's definitely got tire marks on every corner Kevin, I think, you know, looking out the window here, what's coming? Coming is, is lap traffic for Joey Logano and those two tires. I heard you say that earlier. That's going to be the deciding factor for me. I'll be sold if he can get up through, maneuver around and get up through this lap traffic as good as these guys on four tires. And that's, that's really where we saw Bubba Wallace come on strong at the end of that last stage was right at the very end. So we're going to see what happens when they catch the back of this field. You saw Christopher Bell there. His problem was the wheel nut came off, uh, but the wheel lodged itself up there in the right front, so uh, no penalty. Just he had to limp his way to pit road and get it replaced. Bell is three laps down. 39 to go in stage two. Joey Logano leading Bubba Wallace by seven tenths of a second as we take you Fox side by side. Melted, forged, and every spring, we gather round and celebrate iron sharpening iron. But in order to take it all home, you need nerves of steel. The big one is back. Get your tickets now at TalladegaSuperspeedway.com. It's not just about how you get there, but what you make happen along the way. Introducing the 2024 F-150. A tradition of excellence where strength and adaptability meet. Your journey, your legacy to define. Tough This Mark can only be called F-150. You give. 
You give and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get unlimited data. You get America's most reliable 5G network. You get a Samsung Galaxy A14 on them. And you are two doors down. Oh, no, I'm here for the free phone. Yeah. Turn your tax refund into a U-fund. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. So you're telling me this bouncer pass gets us into the Creation Museum too? Yep, how cool is that? What are we waiting for? Let's go! Whoa, is that a mastodon? I think so. This is gonna be awesome. What does fearless look like? By trading pain with a champion? Find out for yourself. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Saturday on FS1, Texas. Home of the last two World Series champs. And home to a brewing rivalry. The benches are clearing. Now, a new chapter awaits as the Rangers battle the Astros. Saturday at 4 Eastern on FS1. Welcome back to Martinsville, where Joey Logano is about to get into lap traffic. And these are uh, cars that are a couple of laps down. They're mad, they're frustrated, and they've got cars that aren't working well. So Logano's really going to have to pick his way past. Yeah, and that three car of Austin Dillon's actually only one lap down. So he definitely does not want to go two laps down, Mike. So he's over if he does. Yeah, it is. And I don't know how much he can actually fight it as bad as his car is. Yeah, he's going to have to go to you don't have the affordability to wait around because you see Bubba Wallace in his rear view already moving around trying to get that point up off the corner doing something different he gets stuck behind him one second Bubba's going to be there pounce yeah. on it and you see when when he caught Austin Austin actually slowed down a little bit to keep his car on the bottom of the corner to even make it harder so Joey up the racetrack to try to dime in the corner to to get a better run off the racetrack to try to find some position um, to, to put himself uh, in, a, in a position to pass up off the corner, but the diamond uh, just goes up the racetrack in the center of the corner and you pull the back car back down to the curb on the exit of the corner. Well, just look how hard it is to pass. I mean, he was way faster than Austin Dillon as he caught him, and then look at this. Bubba Wallace on his bumper, now the 11, Denny Hamlin to his bumper. Accordion's very fast if you can't get around him. Well, this is what we've talked about from the pre-race show all the way to this lap. You have to have a car that is versatile and, and capable to move around in traffic, or it puts you in a position where you become vulnerable uh, for everybody else to, to be better. And that's what happened to Kyle Larson at the end of the last stage. Bubba Wallace ran him down and almost passed him for the stage win. The problem for Logano right here is Dillon's got pretty good drive up off the corner. Well, as I see Logano, I was listening to Kevin tell me that he was maneuvering around, right? He's moving around trying to arc the corner in, diamond it, and get that straight drive off. It doesn't want to answer the call. When he's pulling on the wheel to cut back to the left and turn underneath of him, it's slow to that. That makes him late to the throttle. Austin Dillon drives back off from him. Well, now Bubba Wallace is trying to do the same thing to Logano. He's trying to see if he can find something to put himself in a position to get a good run up off the corner to, to get position on, on Joey Logano and that just sta he stacked everybody up behind him from first to fifth. Yeah. Add Larson to the group now. Look how wide he is on the exit. Look him turn. Oh he's going to try to get on around him on the outside. That's a dirt racer. Always searching. Well that's one thing that makes Kyle Larson so great. He'll, he'll be the first one to try something that you wouldn't think of to try like up the racetrack at Martinsville in the, in the second group to go past somebody but he's going to move that car around until he finds something better. Well things are about to change they're about to come up on David Starr who is four laps down uh, Christopher Bell who is three down and uh, Harrison Burton trying to stay one lap down going to get very crowded here. Well you see Joey Logano give Austin Dillon a shot but just not going to move him out of the way right there in the middle of the corner. Well especially with a car on your outside. David Starr. And like we say, Austin wants to do everything he can do to not be two laps down. I think it also shows you how hard it is to pass. They caught them very fast. That's true, but I think when we started today, as we see Kyle Larson get on the inside of Denny Hamlin, can't quite finish it up off the corner. Now here comes Chase Elliott. And the rest is to follow. Bowman, Byron, Briscoe, they're all catching him. They're going to be stacked up. All the way back basically to ninth or tenth. Somebody's going to start moving each other. What'd you call that? The chrome horn. Yep. It's fixing to come out. Show its rear its ugly head. 
Well, and everybody knew to start the day exactly what they were into as far as traffic and lap traffic and just how difficult it, it, it becomes later in the run, especially in a situation with Logano where his tires aren't as good. I'm sure he's run good while he had clean air, but now he's caught the back of the field and, and stalled out. So. Yeah, and you're only talking 20 laps to stage two in, so everybody knows what that is. He put two tires on, Paul will put two tires on Joey oh. Logano, march that thing to the front, clean air, he's been in the lead the whole time. There you're you gonna go. have more cars zoomed I, into this stuff. I always I always like that, being in, in in the position that Denny Hamlin is in to be able to say, all right, that's mine, I can hit it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, he's the co-owner of that 23 car with Michael Jordan. Bubba way up the racetrack, doing whatever they can do to get out of that stripe, that stripe of rubber on the racetrack, starting to build up, get slick, just keeps getting worse and worse. Whatever problem you were fighting, it just keeps compounding worse and worse. Well, we've, we've seen Denny Hamlin make so many passes through the field to get to this position of battling for second place, and he was able to, to put himself in a spot to where he could use the bumper a little bit and get Bubba up out of the groove. Clear, got him. Bubba's not going to give up on that outside. I think he likes what he found there. Kyle Larson unable to capitalize there on the inside. Now he's moved back to the bottom, drove right back to the inside of Denny Hamlin. These guys are frustration sets in right here. Look That's the, what happens. Look at the run Denny Hamlin got off of that corner. That, that's going to work on Joey Logano too, I believe. He was, went completely to the outside. Now he's rolling the bottom. Well, it's that versatility that we talked about. He's able to run that lane up, and he's able to run the curb. So well, look at him move up, try to diamond that thing back off. You're not going to be able to diamond it up. You can see how low Logano is leaving the corners. That's what's prompting and tempting him to try this outside. Well, you see Logano try to split that rubber to get in the lane of Denny Hamlin, and that kind of disrupt the run, but. Logano's car is just not as good as Denny Hamlin's through the middle of the corner. It's definitely not as good in traffic. And this is the same thing that he did to oh, Bubba no. Wallace, but just a little more aggressive than, than what he did to Bubba. I like this outside that Denny's found. I think he does too. Watch him try to roll to the outside, do a crossover back up. Watch the drive that he gets, the momentum. You can see Logano starting to slip the tires, having to lift a little bit to pedal that thing. Denny able to keep the throttle down. 13 to go, battle for the lead. And Austin Dillon well out in front of it. It's just these two at turn three right now and Bubba Wallace trying to come back to them. Well typical rule of thumb with with these next gen cars is try to put your car directly in front of the car behind you to make it worse. But um, you see Denny push him up out of the way. And it's a problem for Joey Logano is his car just doesn't handle as good as Denny Hamlin's right now. Joey Logano trying to get his first stage win in the last 22 races. Denny Hamlin trying to deny him. Well, now we're going to see if Denny can finish this pass up off the corner by putting the throttle down on the exit. Take, Joey's got that line taken away on the exit of the corner, but Denny rolls a whole car length faster through the center of the corner. If that had been a little bit later in the race, he probably would have forced the issue. Denny Hamlin becomes the third different leader today. 86 laps for Larson, 83 for Logano. Well, and that's what we just said, Clint. We we thought that Benny Hamlin being able to use that outside, he was able to just do everything he needed to do to put Joey Logano in a position to, to finish the pass. Well, I'm just blown away that there's only been one car pass at 22 on two lap tires. I mean, this is definitely going to be in the works for a lot of these crew chiefs. That is an option that is on the table, and some of them are going to use it. Nine to go in stage two as you watch our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Back at seventh place, William Byron, Chase Briscoe. Battling for some stage points here. Yeah, and that's the only spot that Chase Briscoe has made up from those lost spots on the, on the pit stop, and that's why he was a little salty on the radio because it's just so difficult to to make those spots up that you lose so and here's Bubba to the inside of Logano for second. Logano is going to have to work hard here. He 
because if he if he gets door to door too long with Bubba, you can see Larson just lurking in the background right there. Want to pounce on both of them. They get to bouncing off one another just like that. Might open the door and forget a two for one. That's such a unique piece of these next gen cars with the, the you know the, the the body being tough and the right side of the cars being the whole car being tough. You can just kind of slide in there and just bump them up out of the way. You have to hit them a lot harder than you used to though. And you, know, <laughs> and you don't even pretty hard. You don't even worry about it now. Logano is just. Larson getting, is outside. He's getting fired out from all angles and now you're starting to see the the benefit of the four tires compared to the two tires and track position as it gets worse for Logano his car is just going to continue to go backwards. Yeah, this stage can't end quickly enough for Joey. Well now he's back on the bottom. I think that's where he needs to be well, unless he gets moved which he is he is getting moved. Chase Elliott. Leaned on him pretty hard getting into three, moved him up the racetrack. Well, the bad you part have for, to do. The bad part for Joey, his car, he could kind of manage it while he had track position and run around the curb and slow the pace up. And now that everybody's able to use that outside lane, his car just doesn't drive as good up there as everybody else's. And he just, he's become vulnerable on the exits because they can make a better run off the corner. Got to hang on for three more laps. Try to gain some stage points here. As Alex Bowman tries to take fifth away. And look, if, if he loses one more spot, that's going to be where he pitted from. So, I mean, still, they, they aren't going to lose a bunch of track position compared to where they were, but they led a bunch of laps and, and probably put themselves in position to know a lot about their car if they had to put two tires on again. Ford looking for its first National Series race win in NASCAR this season after winning all three of those championships one year ago. See some pretty heavy contact with the 48 and the 22 right there. Logano trying to hold on to a top five here. Denny Hamlin looking for those green and white checkers to end stage number two. Seventh stage win at Martinsville for Hamlin more than any other driver. Bubba Wallace second, Larson Elliott, Logano Bowman. Josh Berry picks up the final stage point. Two stages, 180 laps completed, Martinsville. Denny Hamlin in front. So how's that new Mahindra tractor, Tony? There's nothing more satisfying than working my land with this Mahindra. Well, nothing outside of being Rookie of the Year, winning 62 races, three Cup Series championships, securing dozens of sponsorship deals, and getting inducted to the Hall of Fame, getting married to a wonderful woman, owning a racing team. You know, awesome stuff. Yeah, what? I can't hear you. Mahindra, the official tractor of Tub and Stuart Haas Racing. Get 0% or save thousands during the Mahindra Spring Sales Event. Saturday on Fox, the United Football League kicks off week three. The Memphis Showboats will battle the Birmingham Stallions, seven Eastern on Fox. Spring just got stronger. Well, we, I know the guy in the booth next to me didn't get any stronger this week. That's you. Is that? That's pointed to you, not Mike. There's your stage points today. Larson Wallace Elliott maximizing in both stages. Such an important pit stop right here. You heard Briscoe say, I can't get it done on that racetrack. I need your help, boys. Brigham. And there's been a lot of discussion on Chase Briscoe's radio about what the pit call would be. He was hinting that he wanted to do two tires, but it's going to be four for him, just a little bit too tight, but got better as he ran. Jamie? 22 at Joey Logano led 83 laps there on right side tires only. So, of course, it'll be a four tire stop here. You see a chassis adjustment as well. Bubba in the 23 said he has to slow down to keep that car underneath him. It got a little too swingy. The 11 at Denny Hamlin pretty happy with it. A lot of congestion around the turn. Turns one and two where there are pit stalls and the exit of pit road there at turn two. Denny Hamlin the leader. Elliott up two on the stop and Ryan Blaney picks up 12 spots from 20th to 8th. Craftsman's back on track with deal of the race. 
During this year's Craftsman Truck Series, we're giving race fans rockin' deals on tools to power through projects. Because teams and fans alike trust Craftsman to get the job done right. Curb Appeal begins with Craftsman. It's got power that'll blow you away. This makes yard work a breeze. Scan now for the current deal of the race. From outdoor care to home and auto repair. Do it fast. Do it proud. Do it with Craftsman. Shannon and Jamie here in the race day studios getting you ready for stage number three. Any th uh, surprises so far? Uh, not really. It's been about Toyotas and Hendrick Motorsports like we've really seen all year, especially uh, at the short tracks. And I know that Denny won that last stage. But I've got my eyes on Hendrick Motorsports. I just think it's the 40th anniversary. We love great stories in sports, uh, knowing what Hendrick Motorsports has. All four of those cars painted the same, Shannon. Yeah. I've got my eyes on all four of those guys, mainly Chase Elliott right now in P2. Yeah, speaking of stories, Denny Hamlin and Restart's been the story all week. Let's see how he handles this one, Mike, as he's out front. Thanks, Shannon. Uh, I'll look at the Hendrick hospitality there outside of turn number two, 1,500 employees, former employees, and families. Uh, Daniel Suarez too fast exiting and Ryan Blaney got two tires. He got four on the last caution. So he just got two picked up eight spots two tires for Ty Gibbs. But look at the contact here Gibbs at the top trying to come out. Boom. That was... Then watch down here at the bottom. Watch Logano pull out gets blocked by Bowman has to check up here and stocks them all up. That's his two spots lost. Close quarters. Yeah that's a traffic jam right there. Daniel Hemrick the free pass on this the third caution of the day. A big win for that Chase Elliott in a nine car. To be able to put this 40th anniversary win together for Hendrick Motorsports. Man. Well, and on top of that just for Chase Elliott in general we, we've talked yeah. about maybe not uh, doing everything that they wanted to do as far as performance but to be up front and have a chance here that's all you can ask for. Well, whatever we talk about during the race, you will hear all week long on Race Hub. It's been a busy week on FS1. Expert analysis and opinions, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Drew Blickenster for guests on Tuesday. Chad Kanaus and Eric Almaroli, yesterday's winner here on Wednesday. And Chris Busher will be on Race Hub Thursday. All the news and all the controversy on NASCAR Race Hub. Adam looking pretty tough right there. Man, did he look like a gladiator, didn't he? He's intense. Hey, there's a Martinsville hot dog. He's ordering oh. another set right now. More or less. Speaks. Yep. Bring me some more. Another dozen. Some more. Jamie. Well, Mike, we were talking about the 22 and staying on those left side tires, about 180 laps. No wonder why Joey Logano was falling back. Check this out, the wear on the left rear right here. Look at this flap and all the wear on the left front as well. And hang on and hung on for him to take four tires on that stop. We'll see what he can do now. Wow, 180 laps on one set of left side tires. All right, Hamlin inside, Chase Elliott outside. Zane Smith returned to pit road to tighten the loose wheel. And we're ready for stage three. It'll be 206 laps to go. So we're just shy of halfway. But he goes inside the box. What do you think, Kevin? <laughs> Hamlin fires off. And Elliott is right with him headed for turn one. Well, that's the that's the hard part of, of going that late in the box. For whatever reason, it just becomes hard to to gain an advantage as the leader. So, well, that's exactly why he didn't do it last weekend. I mean, it takes the advantage away from you the longer you wait. Look at this, Chase Elliott to the lead, cleared him. It also made every every person in the grandstand stand up. Look at this. All right. Most popular driver back in the lead. Denny's car's just not taking off quite as good as he would like to. That tells me she's set up probably low on air, set up for that long run. Still a lot of action on the outside. Logano, even with Bowman, that's for fifth place. And Byron with Briscoe for seventh.
We see Ryan Blaney right there in the 12 car on two tires right in the middle of all this action. It'll be interesting to see how long he can hang on with those two tires and if he can keep his track position. We noted right before uh, while we were in break, Clint, just how many cars he had passed since he had his problems on pit road. Well, the other pro the difference is between him and what I saw in Logano is Logano had the affordability of that clean air leading out there all by himself. That saved a lot of tire. He was able to manage that. Blaney's not going to have that opportunity, Myron, in this traffic like that. He's going to have to have his elbows up, leaning on those tires, whether it's the right front of that right rear, a lot more as he's trying to race door to door with cars. Yeah. Right, right now is is not it's not going to be as bad as it is in 50 laps. That's when it'll really show up like it did with Joey Logano, and you just hope that tire doesn't come apart like Joey's did. See him preload the shifter, reach up, either turn on a fan. It was too quick to grab the brake bias. So explain preload, please. Yeah, you'll see his Ryan Blaney's right hand. He'll preload the shifter by putting some pressure, pulling back on it, and that, that car will fall right into gear when it gets close to the rev limiter. That's just something that the teams have, have figured out. Just a quicker way to shift. You don't have to let off the throttle. I was going to say, so what you're saying is he's, he's leaving it wide open. As soon as it That's just right. barely bumps the rev limiter, that thing falls right into gear. It takes it takes pressure. And how you relieve that pressure is either let out of the gas or, like you're saying, hit that rev limiter, just bump it just ever so slightly, takes that pressure off them gears, goes right back into the next one. Twenty percent of the laps that Chase Elliott has led in his cup career have come here at Martinsville. Look at this three oh. wide on the outside of those two tires. Careful boys. Yeah the two tires on that 54 car has put him in a position where he is just getting beat around in the middle of traffic. He's all over the place. Yellow waves turn four. Christopher Bell spins around. That'll be the fourth caution of the day. Not been a good day for Christopher Bell and company. They got, hey, as I say that, it's about as lucky as it gets as the right front lug nut falls off the wheel and it stays in there. That was a very lucky situation that they were able to uh, survive. So Bell stays two laps down. Michael McDowell should be the free pass on this, the fourth caution flag. Does this put us in any kind of a window? You like it, Larry? We're going to stay out. What we're we doing? It, it's it's a bit of a stretch to make it for here. If you could stretch it to 175 laps, and right now we got 197. So uh, Bell was inside Kaz Grala when the car broke loose there. Yeah, it looks like he just spun all on his own. And who who knows the the damage that that right front tire did and what it did to the balance and dragging everything on the bottom of the car when the tire was flat. That's right. It certainly didn't help anything. Yeah, it just spun out. Trying to stay off the car on the outside. Hang on, touch. Lost it. Yeah, and in that in that dark strip of rubber around the corner, it just becomes slick. And if you get the right rear tire or get it uh, hung in the rubber wrong, it just it becomes difficult to hold on to the car. Pit road is open. No takers up front. No, not among the top ten. Truex looking. Is he coming? Yes. And so is Ty Gibbs. Kyle Busch behind him. And Brad Kozlowski. The rest of the leaders stay out. Under caution. 204 laps completed Martinsville. Plenty of contact. I love showing off our NASCAR fans, and boy, do we have some here in Martinsville. We got them from Ohio here, New York, local boy right here, and the best one of all, we got Harvey. <laughs> Harvey, go get me a beer. Yeah! <laughs> no, that is the best behemoth Harvey I've ever met in my life. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a tailgate king. Here you go. That is the best. Have a hot dog. The no way. No <laughs> chance in hell. That is the best Harvick ever. Did you can you believe it? He minded? I've Let seen me try this. Harvick, go horses. get me a beer. I haven't I haven't seen I haven't seen any dogs or horses named Boyer. That's <laughs> for sure. Oh, thankfully, green flag. That is a tailgate king, folks. It was awesome. Chase Elliott inside of Denny Hamlin. Bubba Wallace right behind. 
Kyle Larson on the outside second row. To the point, baby. Look at them folks. They love it. Ben Bowman, Logano, and Briscoe. The first of the cars that pitted is Martin Truex back in 21st with Ty Gibbs. Well, that, that restart worked out a lot better for Denny Hamlin. Being able to not have to fight Bubba Wallace or anybody else to get to the bottom of the racetrack. See Joey Logano being really aggressive back there blocking Chase Briscoe. But that allowed Byron to get on the outside of Logano. They fight for sixth place. You can see the pressure ratcheting up on these cars. Briscoe into Logano. Logano's been into a couple cars. Blaney was in the back of them. It's still, you got to be mindful, it's only halfway. And Byron is going to clear Logano. Yeah, and you look right there on the outside. That's Todd Gill in the 30, 38 car running in eighth spot. Overcame that penalty for uh, leaving the pits with the wedge wrench in the back window. Nice comeback. Well, we have some uh, radio from Todd Gilliland from that miscue on pit road. I would say <laughs> <laughs> bad news is, buddy, you got to come back in. You it was a long time getting there. Long time getting there after having to make that extra pit stop. Jamie? How about Chase Elliott leading right now? He told us in practice and qualifying yesterday that they felt like their setups had gotten stale over the last couple of years here. So they had a different approach this time around. And he said, so far, so good in this race. The car's doing what he wants it to. Just a little bit tight to start this run. And Mike, so far today now, he's led more laps today than he has all season. 23 so far, Jamie. And pulling away. More than a second over Denny Hamlin, one of, if not the largest leads of the day. Well, what those comments tell me is, you know, they felt like they didn't keep up with the evolution of, of the way that things change. And a lot of times when you go to a racetrack, you think you need to stay exactly the way that you are. And that's not how this garage works. It evolves on a weekly basis. Everybody continues to get better. There's way too many smart minds and people. And if you just sit around and do the same things that you've been doing before you know it, you're way behind. Watching these two for a while, Josh Berry and Stenhouse. Berry, car just hasn't. He's lost some track position. Uh, you noted that earlier, Kevin. It just hasn't been able to uh, overcome that. We're told they had a slow pit stop on the four that time, which is what put Josh Berry uh, back here battling for 18. That wasn't the first time either. He lost a couple of positions yep. before that. Still slipping, and sliding around, bouncing off of one another. Saw Chris Buescher getting into the picture there, and the BuildSubmarines.com cam. And we have foot cam on board of Busher. Oh, here we go. Watch that throttle pedal. Yeah, you heard him get loose up off the corner, but you'll notice when, when you hear the gear shift, you see his foot stay wide open. There it is. You yeah. heard the shift too. Did you hear? So on the back stretch, he actually lifted a little bit, burped that throttle to put it in gear. That time, he left it wide open. No. So what happens with, with this strategy in there, Clint? When you get up off the corner and the, the car starts to spin the back tires, if it gets into that rev limiter, the car actually shut off. It, oh. Okay. If you don't have the the, the gear shifter preloaded, so. Uh, when you're in the middle of the straightaway and the gear shifter is preloaded and you don't, you don't have to let off the throttle. But that's the only disadvantage to a package like this uh, is if it spins the wheels and gets up into that rev limit, it will actually shut the car off for a brief moment. Well, he definitely used the throttle to shift once and then that fur on the front straightaway left it wide open, like you said. And I tell you, you can hear how much faster that shift was, too. It's all about time. And, and when you get those shift strategies in there and you don't have to let off down the straightaway, it just it just 
takes less time to do everything and makes you run faster. And if I'm hearing this right, you're picking up that this is something that's evolved this year. This isn't something you did last year with your car, right? Or did you? I did. You did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, this, these, uh, all three of these manufacturers have some sort of shift strategy and. Um, you see the, the Ford strategy right there, but you see how smooth it is with everything that they have going on and the way that they can make that, that car fall into gear. I mean, you could hear it. You didn't even have to see it. You could hear how much quicker and smoother that shift was in the one prior. Into the final stage of the race, and Chase Elliott leading Denny Hamlin by two, Bubba Wallace by two and a half, and Kyle Larson by three seconds. Welcome back to the Cookout 400 on FS1. 234 of 400 laps in the books. 2.2 second lead for Chase Elliott. Time for our Credit One Bank. Ones to watch. All right, Clint, who you got your eye on? I'm going with the obvious. I know, Kevin, I'm going to take the nine car. Chase Elliott, been 41 races, clear back to Talladega 22, but since he's won. Somebody's going to have that 40th anniversary, Rick Hendrick. Might as well be Chase Elliott, America's most popular driver. I think it's going to come down to a late run, and as good as Bubba Wallace uh, has been on the late run, I, I'm going to take Bubba Wallace. He's a two-time Truck Series winner here, and I think he's going to get it done. Well, Denny Hamlin is a five-time winner here. He's won the last two short track races. Controversy and checkered flags follow Denny Hamlin. Keep an eye on the number 11. That's your Credit One Bank ones to watch. How was the, you guys how the hot trouble, dog, by the way? The hot dog was actually better than I expected it to be. Good. What is that bubbling sensation? I, I, I hear <laughs> bubbling. That's my personality. <laughs> Perfect. Best joke you've had in a while. Yeah, I've been. Chris Myers has has been giving me uh, some some insight on good jokes. Don't take anything from him. That's the worst dad jokes in the history of Earth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chase Elliott about to get into some traffic here. Christopher Bell is now two laps down in the number 20, and then just ahead, Harrison Burton, trying to stay one lap down. And Kaz Grolet up there trying to stay on the lead lap. Look at that way all the way up out of the rubber all the way back down on the exit of the corner. Look at that Clint. If he can continue to do that that's going to continue to give him a lot of options as we go through the end of this race. Thanks. Back to that last stage and you know at the ending where they were running that outside line and going to up all the way up around them. The tough pass is going to be that Josh Williams in the 16. Uh, running a part time schedule. He is the last car on the lead lap uh, trying to stay there. That's a great run by him. As we've seen all day when the leader has caught the back of the pack that's really what's bunched things up and allowed the second third and fourth place car to, to catch up and fill that gap pretty quick. Redick has made his way up into the top 10. Regan? Mike, that's right. He's been steadily progressing his way forward all day after starting 19th, trying to get only his second top 10 in nine starts at Martinsville. That car, Billy Scott told me, is identical to his teammate Bubba Wallace because they struggled in practice. It worked out really good for them to know that they could lean on those notes as to what Bubba had going as he was a little bit better in qualifying. Right now, just a little bit too tight in traffic for Tyler Reddick as he tries to work his way forward. He doesn't have to worry about traffic right now. He's got a huge gap in, in front of him. So uh, this should be a time when, when we really see what his car has. And we see right behind him with Brian Blaney on those two tires hanging in there pretty good, Clint. Yeah, they are, just like we saw with Logano. I'm sold. You get down to the closing laps of this race and an untimely caution comes out. I'm staying out, two tires, something. I want clean air, track position. It's... You can see these guys and the struggle they have just getting one position pass takes 15, 20, 30 laps to get it done. Now Daniel Suarez, the first car on four tires back at 17th place and trying to rebound from uh, a speeding penalty back at lap 180. Chase yeah. Elliott leading for a Rick Hendrick in their 40th anniversary race. 
with Larson fourth, Byron fifth, and Bowman sixth. Let's check back in with Michael Waltrip. Well, guys, the celebration continues. I'm with Chad Caps, who's a machinist at the shop and has been at Hendrix for 18 years. How cool is this event today? This is very awesome. Thank you, Mr. H. Everybody's saying a big thank you to Mr. H. I know Mr. H is a family man, and this is your wife. I'm glad y'all came out to the races. Are you enjoying the experience? Yes, this is really awesome. Awesome. It's fun back here, guys. I'm glad we're able to wander around and say hello to these folks. Woo! Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Well, uh, Rick Hendrick not able to be here today. He is recovering from knee replacement surgery. Was scheduled to drive the pace car today, but earlier today, uh, earlier this weekend, he talked with Chris Myers and talked about the Hendrick secret ingredient. So we, we see Jeff Gordon for broadcasting, and now he's got his business owner starter vest thing. You walk starter out. vest. <laughs> How much longer do you want to do this? Uh, until it's no fun anymore. My mind is like it was when I was 18 and 20 years old. Legacy at Hendrick Motorsports is not me. It's the people that won the races and they're there every day. And I want that to go on long after I'm gone. It's the people. Absolutely. It, you're only as good as the people that you have around you. And Rick Hendrick is, is one of the best at putting people in the right places. Jeff Gordon, a, a big part of, of everything that, that goes on. But I can promise you one thing, Clint. He also likes to win. Yeah, oh, yeah. But I will say this about people. People need a leader to follow, and there's no better leader than, than a guy like that. That mindset, work ethic, the drive, the determination, the will to win. He wins in everything, whether it's in this racetrack or on Monday selling cars. That means he's winning. Well, this is what we talked about, Clint, when the leader catches the back of the pack. We've, we've seen this before. Denny Hamlin just becomes more able to maneuver his car in traffic. We saw it the last run with, with uh, a different leader, with Joey Logano leading the race, and now it's Chase Elliott. He caught that 16 car about, the, about to get passed again by Denny Hamlin, who can maneuver his car better in traffic. And now he's using him as a pick. That 16 car, Josh Williams, as you talked about, Chase Elliott still holding tough on that outside. Whoa, oh. Bubba Wallace slid. Locked you up saw the left front tire. Yes, sir. You saw that left front lock up. So Hamlin may get the lead here, and Kyle Larson may get third from Bubba Wallace. Side by side, two by two, three by three, including we've the lap car. Seen this so many times over the years. I've experienced it behind the wheel. Denny Hamlin, nobody manages tires better than Denny Hamlin. He's so good at that. Long runs, he manages those tires, keeps that car, the balance on that thing neutral with his driving style, doesn't abuse the brakes, always there on a long run. Well, Here he I, is again. I, I think the, the one thing that is missing from that conversation as well, Clint, is he know what he wants. He knows what he wants in the race car in practice. And Martinsville is a racetrack that every race is a building block for the next one. And, and that's the race is really the best notes that you have in order to, to lead to the next event. Because we heard him talk earlier, uh, you know, practice is tough to know what you have. And until you get into this race and know what you can do in traffic and how the rubber builds up, you just you don't know how your car is going to be able to do it. Chase Hill is doing a great job. He's going to have to take that exit away from him. Can't quite get cleared again. There's traffic coming ahead. He's going to get Denny's trying to stay on that bottom and get into that traffic. You see Nemechek ahead of them and use him as a pick just like he did the last. And ahead of Nemechek there are four cars all under a blanket. As they battle side by side for the lead with 143 laps to go in Martinsville. Hamlin's last win here was in March 2015, the same day that Chase Elliott ran his first NASCAR Cup race. Wow. How about that for a stat. Denny ran him up the racetrack that time, got him clear. So Hamlin cements the lead for now over Chase Elliott, Bubba Wallace, uh, Larson, and William Byron, the front five. But I was leaving RCR, um, and so there was a lot of tension between everybody at RCR and myself at that particular point because everybody was mad that that we were leaving, and I didn't take a liking to 
uh, the three spinning me out. So I just held on as long as I felt like I could right there without getting beat up um, by the whole team. Uh, to keep, it, to keep him from making their pit stops, you know, take off right there. He was about to get lapped. And that was my whole goal was to make sure he didn't win. So okay. I was just going to hold him in his pit stall as long as I could. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thursday is a different episode from Tuesday. Who's guesting this week? Now we've got um, old Yankees manager Joe Girardi on our show this week. So it'll be fun to talk about the start of baseball season. And he, he had a lot of great insight for me as I was going towards the end of my career on when the right time was. Watch yeah, this, this huge hammer that you about got hit with. I did? Yes. Oh, right? Oh. That's the big hammer I speak of. That would have left a mark, Kevin. It probably would have. Boom! Your truck looks a little worse for the wear there. Yeah, and that was his pit stall, so I was just trying to sit there long enough to where they couldn't make a pit stop and <laughs> make sure that they didn't win the race. But those are the emotions that, that come out. Not, not anything that you're proud of, but happens. But you made your point. Yeah. I guess. I miss those days with you. You, you liked when I made, got a, mad. made a fool out of myself? No, I don't think so. I just think, you know, there's people that get mad, then there's Kevin Harvick. It was awesome. Legendary. Well, I haven't seen anybody matter in a long, long time than last Blocking. Sunday, uh, Martin Truex. But a week later, uh, the page has turned. We're at a different racetrack, different day, and here we go. And uh, Truex got a little off cycle on pit stop so not part of the discussion right now he's in 22nd as we watch Bubba Wallace Kyle Larson William Byron we've seen these two have trouble before <laughs> Dayton clear back all the way back to last week at the end of the race with uh, Bubba Wallace and Kyle Larson and they're uh, they're getting back after it again as they're trying to get around Nemechek well we'll see just how tough it is to get around even a lap car uh, you see oh. Larson Try to shove the 42 car out of the way right there. He didn't really appreciate the fact that he's just sitting in there racing in the middle of uh, himself and Bubba. Those, that, that battle goes back to Las Vegas several years ago. It's It's been a battle for sure. And honestly, those cars, I thought Larson was a little bit better than Wallace. I'm super impressed with the, the job that Bubba Wallace has done today. He's been fast all weekend long, was fast in practice, qualifying, been up front in that top three all day long. I still think Bubba has one of the best really long run cars. As we go deeper into this run, this is about the time that we saw Kyle Larson start to fall off earlier uh, when Bubba Wallace almost passed him for the first stage win. And I think that very same thing's going to happen with this nine car Chase Elliott. But I do I, I do not think that that Hamlin car is going to fall off. I think that car will I stay steady Eddie and, and uh, going to be hard to handle. They're going to need a caution. They're going to need pit stop something to go uh, you know out of the ordinary for that 11 car do well, not think on a long run if it's a 30 plus lap run you're going to beat the 11 without some help and Chris Gabehart has told him on the radio that he needs to get as big a gap as possible because it gives him more options on, the, on from a strategy standpoint and so Denny Hamlin is going to keep charging hard and try to make sure he puts as many a lap down as possible and get as big a gap between him and second place as possible. Inside of 125 laps to go at Martinsville. How about an FS1 Sunday afternoon? Crank it up for all you hot dogs. Copy. 
120 laps to go at Martinsville Speedway. At least one round of pit stops on the way. Tick-tock, grandfather clock. That's what they're racing for here at Martinsville Speedway. As we welcome you back to the Cookout 400 on FS1, Denny Hamlin in front of Chase Elliott by 1.7 seconds. Here's our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear more driven. Larry Mack, when do we expect pit stops? Yeah, Mike, whether you pitted at 185 or 205, the last two cautions, you could probably run another 60, 70 laps on fuel. But I'm seeing over a second fall off right now. Going back and watching this race a year ago, which had a long green run in the final stage. If you split this stage, even adding in that last caution, I'm saying once we get north of about lap 300, we may see them start peeling off. But Mike, did you ever play a game of chicken? If you do pit <laughs> under green, you hope that everybody else pits under green because you'll move trapped one to two laps down if that caution comes out. Thanks, Larry. You saw Chris Gabehart here. Uh, let's talk a little basketball. Uh, Hamlin's crew chief and Blaney's crew chief, Jonathan Hassler, uh, both went to Purdue where they were classmates. And Hassler was a crewman on Gabe Hart's late model uh, that he drove while in college. Over on the women's side, look Dang what happened it. today. Caitlin Clark comes to an end, unfortunately. Well, Don Staley's squad, 87. I'm, Iowa, the runner up for the second straight year. Man, I hats off to South Carolina, but man, I I loved what I got to watch out of Caitlin Clark. I'm never really watched women's basketball before until this year obviously because of her obviously because of all the buzz but it was legit I, I I almost felt bad for the men's basketball they were she put on a better show than they did absolutely I'm glad, I'm glad you have time to watch basketball now Purdue takes on UConn tomorrow night for the men's championship well, let's see Ryan Priest Joey Logano and I are from Connecticut none of us went to UConn uh, when I went to college, there were more cows than students in stores. Hey, all that's changed. Let's check with Jamie. Yes, and hats off to Purdue going to the championship tomorrow night. I'm looking at Bubba Wallace right now. He settled back in third. That's pretty much where he's been all race long. But the last pit stop, he came in and lost two positions. Now take a look at his pit box on the right. You see it's actually on the curb. His crew chief, Booty Barker, chose there, even though they had the second choice. And I asked him why. He said he likes the way that the timing loops are. It actually helps Bubba on exit. The downside is it's tougher on the crews, and we saw it there when they lost those two spots. Oh. Well, now let's talk Denny Hamlin and pit stops, because in the six races here, since the last of his five Martinsville wins, Hamlin has had eight speeding penalties at this track. He likes to run it right up to the edge. Well, you have to run it right up to the edge here and get everything that you can. Here comes William Byron, first one to come to pit road. It won't be long. You're going to see the rest of them coming. Yeah, this will this will definitely put everybody in a box to have to make some decisions. So the cycle starts a little early. Nine's here. coming. Atlanta, Love is coming. Here comes the five. Second, Jamie. third, and fourth. Well, it's the game of chicken, right? One comes, they're all coming. So William Byron, the first to peel off into his pit box, said they're going to leave the balance alone. Pretty happy with it as they put four tires on there. His teammate, Chase Elliott, led a good portion of this race, making his way on down pit road. Bubba Wallace from the third spot. We just talked about his last pit stop. We'll see how this works out for his crew. As the nine goes to work, no adjustments there for Chase Elliott. Four tires stop. Denny Hamlin as well peels off as he makes his way down. There's Bubba Wallace's crew. They're on that curb. This is the downside for the crew. Have to work a little bit harder. But that side, that's straight away. He has that opening right there so he can hammer down when he needs to. As you see, Kyle Larson came in. Four tires for him. Pretty good on his balance. Just stuck back in traffic. Denny Hamlin comes to a halt in his stall. Four tires and fuel. Alex Bowman, Josh Berry finishing up. Kyle Bush is in. Here's Joey Logano, Todd Gilliland, and more. You see Denny exit, and here they come around here. I think the nine might get him, Kevin. Yeah, and coming coming out of the pits right there, it's really hard to get the front tires to turn. So 
Chase Elliott's got his car wound up. Denny Hamlin stayed out on the track too long. He's clear. Is he going to move down? He's going to give it to him. Now, this is not for the lead. Currently, it's for 11th place. Chase it might go the leader. As long as that caution doesn't come out, that is the race for the lead right there. It will be, yes. That was huge. Stayed out too long, 11. Elliott was 1.1 seconds back when he pitted. Look at the difference that it made for William Byron. He was the first one to pull the trigger, got on pit road. Yeah, and we're talking one lap. And the big difference in that lap time is, is over a second, like Larry said. And that, that put uh, Denny Hamlin behind Chase, Chase Elliott there, which what will be the race for the lead once this cycles around. But I think the other thing here, we have Martin Truex who had 20 laps um, fresher tires and there's some other guys that are going to take a chance and try to gamble and run this thing longer. Chase Elliott is going to have to do a better job getting through traffic. Put the bumper to him. Do whatever it takes. Do not get held up behind him. Denny Hamlin is on his bumper and will pounce just like he did last time. I think Denny Hamlin, had, that's exactly what I was talking about. Move him out of the way. Here comes his teammate, William Byron. He's going to use Sinhouse as a pick for Hamlin. This is big. Well, he's got to be careful doing that because if he gets a caution, it puts him in a bad spot. They're still... Still. Comes another Hendrick car trying to get to the inside of Denny Hamlin. He cannot be mired behind all these cars. He might be able to get one or two of them, but I don't think he can get all of them. So again, they're racing for 11th on back. The first 10 drivers on the scoring pylon have not yet made their green flag stop. This could put Hendrick one, two, three when it all cycles out. Now, obviously, that has to happen. Still several cars to get on the pit road and make that happen. All right, here's some Denny Hamlin audio. One week you have the fastest stop, and the next week things are different. Here's your leader, Chase Briscoe, who was last on pit road lap 185. Well, he can't complain too much because that's what won in the race last weekend. And there is the difference. Yeah, so one second on the lap time, one second on the pit stop. That's two seconds total, and put them side by side. All right, Briscoe comes to pit road and gives up the lead to Austin Sindrick. Briscoe, one of the five fastest crews on their average four-tire stop this year. I'll tell you who's the fastest, William Byron. His car has come to life for the 24. And that's what we talked about at the beginning of this race. This racetrack goes through through an evolution of changes as it puts rubber on the racetrack, as the shadows start to come over the over the grandstands, and the racetrack starts to change as, as you run this and progress through the race, and especially as you run these long green flag runs, and that rubber really builds up in the corners. How many times have we seen that 24 find the front at Martinsville? So Chase Briscoe gets back on track, but because he stayed out so many laps after the Hendrick cars, he's now a little more than half a lap behind. Well, you saw it, and Kevin noted it. I mean, one lap difference between these cars was all it took for William Byron to, to catch these guys and then them to be able to pass the leader, Denny Hamlin. Josh Berry will have to do a pass through because of an uncontrolled tire on his pit stop. Yeah, they've had a miserable day on pit road. Yeah, he's going to move him up the track a little bit more and take this position away. William Byron. Still several cars to pit. McDowell, Keselowski, Graw, the Gibbs, Gregson, Truex. Eight of them out there. Yep. And Cendrick getting a little patient with Austin Dillon there. It's a little shot in the arm for this race. This is a huge moment, momentum change. Certainly a big shift for the 11 car, Denny Hamlin. And then that's... Uh, Byron, I mean, them pitting early yes. got him that track position. That was a great heads-up call. Byron was two and a half seconds behind when he made his pit stop. But by pitting first and having the advantage of those fresh tires, he was able to drive up ahead of his teammates and currently in eighth place. Well, that's one thing, winning a race puts you in a position to, to take chances and do things like that. And, and here at Martinsville, coming to pit road early is a big gamble because if the caution comes out or something happens, but they were the, the very first car on pit road and they are reaping the benefits. Noah Grixon has made his stop and now Cindric comes to pit road and gives up the lead to Daniel Suarez. Brad Keselowski is also in. So that will leave 
somehow just four cars in the uh, top half dozen that have not been to pit road. Suarez, Truex, Gibbs, and Grala. They're going to need a caution soon, very soon. Suarez and Truex, car length apart. This is for the lead. Zane Smith to the inside. Trying to get a lap back here. One of the three that he is down in the 71. Yeah, the tough part, like we've talked some of the other weeks, for a, for a car like Martin Truex Jr. is having to get out of the way for the lap cars and running that outside lane and not, not being in the part of the racetrack that you have to be in to make the, the amount of lap time that you need uh, with old tires. So it just gets, it, the, the problem kind of gets compounded as you, as you run long. Ty Gibbs has made a stop. And now Michael McDowell peels off and heads for pit road. We're going to take your box side by side, but don't worry. If they make pit stops, you won't miss it. Saturday on FS1. It's the next chapter in a Bruin rivalry. The benches are clearing in the American League Championship Series. The Rangers battle the Astros. Saturday at 4 Eastern on FS1. You can't stop me Brace for impact as the baddest superstars on the planet are unleashed in prime time. Listen to this place. All new Friday Night Smackdown at 8, 7 Central on Fox. NASCAR returns to Dover Motor Speedway, home of the Monster Mile. With more than 24, expanded campgrounds, an expanded fan zone of fun for all ages. More heart-pounding action. Unforgettable moments. And above all, more roar. NASCAR roars at Dover Motor Speedway, home of the Monster Mile, April 26th to 28th. Not all Caitlin Clarks are the same. Caitlin Clark, city planner. Just like not all internet providers are the same. Don't settle. Get real deal speed, reliability, and power with Xfinity. Shoots from here? That's kind of my thing. Get the real deal with Xfinity Internet today and get fast speeds and a reliable connection to all your devices in the home, even when everyone is online. This season, Toyota Racing is looking for jaw droppers. Break for Martin Shurex right there, the fastest lap of the day. Iron stomachs that can stand the pressure. <laughs> and quick draw thumbs that leave their own smoke trail. So hold on tight and strap yourself in. This season, we want you. Join us at Toyota Racing. Everyone's hyped that Wendy's made the official hamburger of March Madness a buck. Yeah! But Tyler and Toby are on another level. Get it for a buck, get it for a buck. Dave Single, Dave Single. Get hyped with fresh, never frozen beef on Wendy's Dave Single for a buck, only in the app. Long green flag run at Martinsville. Daniel Suarez and Martin Truex have stayed on the racetrack. Suarez is the leader. But William Byron, Chase Elliott, and Kyle Larson have now passed Truex, bumping him back to fifth spot. Uh, Larry, those two, Suarez and Truex, how long can they run? Yeah, they can go to about 20 to 30 to go on fuel, so they still can go another probably 40 to 50 laps. And honestly, I think they're past the point of no return. They're committed now. Yeah, you're landing the baby mate, man. I tell you what, Kyle Bush is giving William Byron fits trying to stay on that lead lap. And there's William Byron is passing Suarez for the lead. So Byron, the first to pit in this green flag cycle, passes Daniel Suarez, one of the last two drivers on the racetrack who have not pitted. And that completes the cycle. Still 74 to go. Got to save those tires, save the temperature in them. You can do that with the brakes. He needs to get out of from this lap traffic. He wants that clean air so he can go back to managing his program. Kyle Busch in the eighth, last car on the lead lap in 21st place. Hard to manage anything when you're in that traffic that hard, aren't you, hey, Kevin? Well, you have to. Let's look at the, the cycle here and, and William Byron being able to 
hit first, put him from fifth to first. Bubba Wallace went from third to seventh. I so. think he was the biggest loser in all yeah, of that. I would agree. I mean, obviously, Denny Hamlin lost it from first to fifth, but uh, that car he owns, Bubba Wallace, was, was certainly uh, didn't fare well in that pit stop. One, two, three. <laughs> the Hendrick cars, they're the ones that won that pit stop big time. And I think Rudy Fugel, he leads the charge in that. Great heads up call by being the first one on pit road and put his driver in a catbird seat. Great interview of Rick Hendrick by Chris Myers in the pre-race talking about Martinsville Speedway where they got their first win in 84 with Jeff Bodine. The 100th win for Hendrick came at Michigan. Jimmy Johnson at Darlington for win number 200 and William Byron at Texas last September win number 300. For NASCAR's winningest team in history, Hendrick Motorsports. Celebrating 40 years, their Ruby anniversary here today. Their 28 wins here, more than any other team at any track in NASCAR. Now we see William Byron still struggling to get by Kyle Busch and Kyle's doing everything he can do to stay on the lead lap but finally gives in and lets William Byron get by. See him still waving that blue flag. With you the might as well save your energy with that blue flag at this place as hard as it is to pass. He knows he's trying to stay now it's not only he's in the lead uh, lucky dog spot so he has to work hard to stay there as he let, puts a car down he's got to go with him fill that hole Daniel Hemrick going one lap down that'll leave 18 cars on the lead lap as Jeff Gordon looks on Larry yeah we got a little race trend for Martinsville the four races with the Gen 7 car 2022 2023 and we are there now the average of the last caution Lap 333, 67 laps to go. We did have an overtime finish two years ago. Remember this, though, our first overtime finish of 2024 last week at Richmond. Thanks, Larry. That advantage that William Byron got by pitting first and using those fresh tires to uh, get him the lead now by eight tenths of a second over his teammate Chase Elliott. Jamie? I talked to Rudy Fugel this morning, crew chief for William Byron. There he is right there. He said walking in this morning, it just felt different. You look around and saw Hendrick Motorsports gear everywhere. He wants this win bad, but he knew they had an uphill climb. They qualified 18th. That's tied for the worst effort of the year. But they've had a fast race car, a good call to get his driver out front. Now they're sitting in the catbird seat looking at their third win of the season. Well, you got to be a little careful when you get to these big anniversary wins. I think it was approaching the 300th Hendrick win when here at Martinsville, Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson took each other out, fighting too hard to be the one to score that win for Rick Hendrick. Watch this. This was all but a caution right here. Chris go hard into the bumper of. You can't really see it from that bumper cam how sideways he was, but he was looking at the infield. That was uh, Ty Gibbs. Yeah. Gibbs now one lap down. Yeah, and Chase Briscoe just moved up to ninth. Has had a good car. I'm sure he's frustrated. They had a little bit of trouble on pit road and lost a few spots and it had never really made those spots back up. So three Chevys lead two Fords. Uh, excuse me, lead two Toyotas, then Blaney's Ford, Bowman Chevy, and then three Fords to round out the top ten. Ford still looking for their first victory of the season. I heard you say the name Blaney, and I haven't really heard anything good out of that until that. I look over my shoulder, he's in sixth. That's pretty typical for Ryan Blaney. He's yep. a grinder. Regan? 
Well, Mike, that's exactly what they have done all day long is grinded. That car at one point was plowing tight earlier on. They've continued to make adjustments, of course, had that extra pit stop early on that cost them all that track position. More recently, though, just needed a little bit of security in that race car on the exit. He's been quiet since the green flag stop a minute ago. Daniel Suarez completes his pit stop finally under green. Uh, that leaves only Kaz Grala in 14th place, who has not stopped under this uh, green flag cycle. Well, one thing to think about is fatigue. These long runs, all this shifting, all the pressure that you have to have on the brake pedal, these guys are getting tired. It's a lot of work. 57 laps to go. Hendrick Motorsports in the top three spots out front as we take you Fox side by side. We believe in the two minute drill, goal line stands, toe taps, strip sacks. We believe in beer snakes, the giddy up and whatever this guy's doing. We believe in speed and power, hustle and grit, and that nothing is more dangerous than a man with a dream. A star is born in the UFL. We believe in football. United Football League, Saturday, Memphis, Birmingham, on Fox. The Bush Guide, cold and smooth survival skills. Hello? Should you become stranded, be ready to signal rescuers. Bush. How long have I been out here? About 12 minutes. Head for the mountains. At the Cracker Barrel, freshly made food at a fair price is just what we do. In fact, we've got over 20 meals under $12. Each served with a helping of care. Eat, shop, earn Cracker Barrel rewards. All the parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. Hello, Ghostbusters. It's Doug. We help people customize and save hundreds on car insurance with Liberty Mutual. We got a bit of a situation. Sure, I can hold. Liberty, 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 Liberty. In theaters now. Unbelievable! Have you ever seen anything like that? Do we have your attention yet? Is this the new face of the great American race? Let's go! Is this how you dance on the razor's edge? Photo finish! How you find a diamond in the desert? Yeah. How you beat the heat? Will this gladiator be the last one standing? Who's gonna attack from the rest of the pack? Let's do it. Last question. Are you not entertained? Welcome back to NASCAR Cup Racing from Martinsville on FS1, presented by Mother's High Performance Car Care. William Byron leading Chase Elliott by 1.6 seconds. Now, in case you missed it, Kyle Larson started on the pole, led the first 86 laps of this race, and was the winner of stage one. Joey Logano took just two tires and held on to the lead for almost the same amount of laps, but when he pitted, those left side tires have been on for a long time and didn't look good. Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin battled for the lead. Hamlin prevailed. And he was the winner of stage two at lap 180. Only one caution early in stage three. And after a long green run, William Byron from two and a half seconds back was the first to pit. And when the pit cycle was done, he is the leader over Chase Elliott now by two seconds. Hendrick running one, two, three with Bowman in seventh. Hamlin for Joe Gibbs in fourth. Ryan Blaney for Roger Penske. Team Penske making their 6,000th start across all series in fifth. Bubba Wallace sixth. Well, this car right here, Ryan Blaney, he has had a fantastic day of making his car better. We see this out of the number 12 car, and 
Ryan Blaney's team all the time, no matter the racetrack or what's happening, they, they have the ability to adjust on their car and be able to make it better throughout the day. Today, they had to actually come back in the pits because they didn't get the adjustment in, but they knew their car was bad enough that they had to adjust on it, and Clint, it is paying dividends. Fastest car on the track, bad fast. Ryan Blaney catching Denny Hamlin in front of him. Hamlin's running a 30, he's at a 10. 20s in front of them. Fast, fast race car. When the time's right, pay when it's open, boys. Go get it. Time to get paid. 43 laps to go. Kevin, how much physical, more physical, is racing here at Martinsville now that we're shifting four times a lap? Well, it just wears you out because you're doing a lot of a lot of driving with, with one hand. You're shifting. You can see uh, the in-car that we had right there with, with Ryan Blaney as he would go into the corners. His, his whole body would almost shift to the right. You can see he's got his head up against the up against the headrest and the shoulders kind of go to the right. They're getting tired and they're laying their heads up against the against the headrest trying to stay as relaxed as po relaxed as possible. But it, it will absolutely wear you out Clayton, on, a, on a day like this even though it's 60 some degrees outside. It still gets pretty hot in there when you have these continuous laps and, and it's just a lot of work. The shifting aspect of you know. Mike's question to you is what I see. I didn't have a chance to do that at a track like Martinsville, but it's comes at a pretty like watch no more than he gets it straight. He already had to take his hand off the wheel to shift right along with Chris Buescher. Yeah, and you can see Chris moves around a lot in his seat as he hits the brake goes way forward. On board with Ty Gibbs. It just seems like a pain in, to have to do it. I, I wish. I told this yesterday. I wish we could do away with shifting, especially at a track like Martinsville. I don't know how to do it. I don't have all the answers, but I know that it would change the way these guys, you know, keep their momentum. A tight car will be tighter, won't respond to the throttle up off the corner because of the affordability of the shift. There's a lot of differences there that it would make in the overall outcome of this race, in my opinion. So everybody's got one, right? That's right. William Byron with a three second lead. Henrik one two three. This is the hundred fifty first cup race at Martinsville and no single team has ever finished one two three here. Wow. Well if there's any team that can they can do that it would be Hendrick Motorsports and obviously they have probably they always put a lot of effort in every week but everybody knows how important this weekend is to them. And if there's anybody can be a thorn in your ear it's Denny Hamlin. <laughs> <laughs> he can break that little uh, celebration party away and he's right there for the taking. Now Austin Sindrick's on fresher tires uh, and there's Hamlin and here comes Blaney right after him so Hamlin uh, can't wait around but is he really quicker than Sindrick. Let's see. Well he's frustrated with him you saw him give two really big shots but we see Ryan Blaney has caught Denny Hamlin and he, we said it I mean he's definitely the fastest car on the track Ryan Blaney taking advantage of of Hamlin being door to door with Cindric right there his teammate can he try to run in on the outside do a crossover right here that's what he's looking for and stay on the outside. Cindric a lap down in 18th. I think Denny run him up the racetrack. Yeah, I'm sure Denny thinks that this is probably um, a lot harder than it needs to be, but it's the way it goes. Oh, big shot by Denny Hamlin. You Austin have to. You oh, Josh Berry off the curb up into Ricky Stenhouse. Well, Cindric's tires are 15 laps fresher uh, than Hamlin's. So I think Berry and Stenhouse, that isn't over yet down here. Stenhouse repaid the favor getting into one. They're still door to door down the back stretch. 30 laps to go about the time all those frustrations come out and payoffs and paybacks become the order of the day. As we get to the closing stages here. A lot of green flag runs here. If I'm the leader I don't want to say it but it sure seems like we've been around here a long time. 1984 Rick Hendricks unsponsored all star racing Chevrolet with Jeff Bodine at the wheel. They won the race. Uh, they picked up a sponsor. And the rest is history. Sounds like a movie. 
Harry was, Hyde certainly made that movie. There was a lot of uh, a lot of that group in Days of Thunder, wasn't it? It almost was the Harry Hyde story. And the way that happened was during the filming of Days of Thunder, Harry Hyde was a consultant to the film crew. So during breaks in the shooting, he would sit and tell racing stories. And the movie writers, they were copying it all down, put a lot of it into the movie as it really happened. Robert Duvall is your character. You're, you did something right. That was couldn't have been a better awesome human being to be your character. It tells a lot about you. Well, the detriment of a lot of the cars that have been leading today is not being able to get through traffic. William Byron started, I think, 18th in this race and, and was able to get through traffic and a great pit call put him in the lead. But catching all these lap cars towards the end of this race, William has done a pretty good job of being able to maneuver and get through traffic. He's got a huge gap to second place with Chase Elliott. He drove off from him. You spot on there, Kevin. Well, we saw Chase Elliott earlier have a little bit of a struggle in traffic, and that's when Denny Hamlin got by him. But Denny Hamlin has not been as good this run as he as he has been the rest of the race. Well, next week we go to the big track in the big state on FS1. We're battling in Texas at Texas Motor Speedway. Free race kicks things off at 2 Eastern. Green flag at 3 next Sunday on FS1. William Byron 2.8 seconds ahead of Chase Elliott. Waiting to see who will get to wind the grandfather clock. Where's your clock Clint? It's in the living room. How about you? I heard you, yours are still in storage. My my wife my wife uh, didn't like the decor of the clock so she said it, it didn't need to go in the house and I said well it's going in the house. Uh, into the into the man cave so it lives in the garage and, and soon going to get moved to the happy hour set. Well Martinsville used to give out traditional race trophies like all the other tracks. 1963 there's Fred Lorenzen uh, with such a trophy after he won the Old Dominion 500. But the track promoter Clay Earls on the left was friends with the fellow who owned Ridgeway Clock Company just three miles south of here. And they said hey how about a grandmother clock as a race trophy. So in April 64, Red Lorenzen uh, got the first of those grandmother clocks that was presented to a winner. What happened to that clock? He gave it to his crew chief, Herb Nab, uh, who worked for Holman Moody and later won two championships with Cale Yarborough and Junior Johnson. When Nab passed, his widow took the clock and gave it to their friends and neighbor and cup driver, Ken Reagan. David Reagan's father. Oh, wow. And that clock is still in the Reagan's household. And Lorenzen's daughter, Amanda, says she gets a nice note and a picture from Ken with the clock every year or so, showing her it's still in the racing family and wow. being well taken care of. That's a great story. How do you know that? I, I learn something every week about racing cars, <laughs> some sort of historic anything I wish they could show the look on our faces when he goes off on those history, history lessons <laughs> <laughs> all right 20 to go next time by for William Byron who is off to another great start as he was one year ago with multiple wins early in the season Larry how much of a gamble was it for William Byron to pit early several laps before any of the other contenders well, I had set it up right before that, Mike. You know, the, the downside of, of pitting it all in the green at a half mile racetrack with how long pit road is, is you're going to go a lap and a half down. And that was the gamble. But I think Rudy Fugel said, you know what? We got a couple of wins. That change, that gives you a bigger playbook. When you've got two wins, that opens up a lot more for you. And obviously, it cycled through and it cycled them right to the lead. Exactly. Byron was playing with house money. With wins in the bank, 18 to go. Yeah, the only thing I don't like right now is he's been stuck behind Chris Buescher for several laps now. What I do like about that, and the reason I think you see that there's no pressure. Take your time with these guys. Do not force an issue. Don't put yourself in trouble. You've got a huge lead here. Manage it. And Rudy Fugel on that box is helping him do that. I've never seen this before at Martinsville, but there's so much rubber down with all these long green flag runs that even the outside line down in one and two is starting to rubber up completely way out on the outside. 
Well, as we ride on board with Chris Busher right here, you go down in here to turns one and two, you really see the blackness of the racetrack right where the right side tires are right there, but it, it's really starting to cake up down there. Big in turns one and two. But you can see it from the end cars just the, look at that you, you say the cake up it's more so down in one and two than it is three and four 16 to go Larry Mack watch this right here you can literally see I the can rubber. promise you those crew chiefs are still busy on top of those pit boxes thinking about the what if right now we still have 14 drivers on the lead lap they're closing in on 85 to 90 laps on these tires what if this caution comes out that's where it's going to be a big, big gamble. Clint, you say it every week. What that 24 wants to see is that white flag because we know the next flag will end the race. Well, if it doesn't, I think it's going to be two tires that win the race. If that caution comes out, we learned that with Logano, you're going to need two tires and a quick stop at that. If we go to overtime, it'll be somebody's bumper that wins the race. <laughs> that too. Ross Chastain, last car on the lead lap in 14. That's a hard car to pass, guys. Slapped all the way up to 14th place. Everybody, what would we do that? Two weeks ago or last week? Everybody said the hardest car on this racetrack to pass is that one car. Well, he even agreed with them. I, I'm, right now, that lead is going away quickly. You see Chase Elliott's down to 1.5. And that's what we saw earlier when Chase Elliott was leading and Dem Denny Hamlin caught him. It, that lead evaporated quickly. Well, you see those two cars door to door in front of Chastain. All that starts to compile in front of you. And that's what really starts slowing down and cutting that lead deficit in half. You see Chase Elliott back there with his teammate Larson behind him. Still one, two, three for the Hendrick camp. Yeah, and really his only hope is you know that that the eight car moves out of the way or something along those lines but there's only 10 laps to go so like you said really the best thing that the 24 has going for him is that gap and just managing uh, the lead right now because Chase going to have to fight some of the same battle that that William Byron is to get through traffic. William starting to put the pr uh, pressure on Chastain moving him up the racetrack. I agree with that move. It was time but Chastain's not done yet. Hard to believe in 70 some years 76 years of racing here no team has ever had a one two three finish and it could happen here nine laps from now moving him up the racetrack one and two took care of business that's you would never think that William Byron is that aggressive driver right his just his personality his demeanor is not there but he does the right moves at the right time and that's why he's won so many races that right there was a, a heads up move knew it was time moved one of the hardest guys to pass out of the way Ross Chastain well, when you when you get inside the race car, you have to be able to know when to do that. And, and here at Martinsville, you have to pick and choose your spots in order to not make somebody mad. And that was just one of those moments where being the leader of the race, you had to put yourself in a position to get by Ross Chastain. Not every day you see that man nervous. I guarantee you, Jeff Gordon, I've stood up here in the booth, boys, with him, as you did, Mike, for many years. That guy is more nervous sitting on that box right now than he was when he was in that 24 leading these races. I don't think he's nervous for William Byron because Byron now has a four car buffer between himself and Chase Elliott. You darn right he's nervous. He wants to win this race and deliver this win back. And Elliott has a two car lengths on Kyle Larson. And there's a big gap back to the next car. You couldn't script this any better for them. The only thing that can wipe this out is we know what that is. Can it happen? Will it happen? Well the only question right now in the Hendrick household is going to come from Linda. It's going to be why didn't Alex Bowman finish fourth? <laughs> Good point. Well, this green play uh, run is over 185 laps. And the last time we had one that long here at Martinsville was September of 1996. Clear back to 96. That's pretty amazing. I've never seen the track, the rubber build up and, and the groove move up like this. I mean, they're legitimately running clear up in the second, almost third lane and finding speed. Well, William Byron has the most speed right now. He's just stretching this lead out. And now he's the, got some clear track. Absolutely. Look at all the clear track ahead. I think he can ride right there and get the job done. And that last time we had this long, a green flag run who went to victory lane, Jeff Gordon. Oh my 24. gosh, I don't want to say it. Now Walter, four. 
Nemechek. I think he blew a tire right front. All right, pressure's on. What just, are we going to do? Just like last week in the final three laps. Caution. Unbelievable. Blew it right front. Yeah, it looks like the brakes, or maybe brakes, brakes went out. Yeah. Fire and blew the tire. Yeah. No. <laughs> Nothing comes easy in this sport. Got to earn it. Make the right calls here. Everybody hit their marks. Driver, hit your marks coming in the box. Boys, I need you now more than ever. All right, watch John Hunter Nemechek here in the Skip Barber Racing oh, car. Oh, brakes. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you were See right. See the tire blow out right there as he went and hit the brakes going in the corner. See that right front, right front just drop. Oh, no. <sighs> And it never fails. No, you Perfect. knew it. I mean, that's why he was nervous. He wasn't nervous that William well, Byron was going to mess up. He was nervous that that caution come out and take this from them. They had it. One, two, three. They still have it. We got to make the right calls here, and, and everything can be fine. But they they have. Uh, there's a lot can go wrong here. Look at the irony in who brings that caution out. Who's one of the owners of that number 42? Nine-time Martinsville winner for Hendrick Motorsports, Jimmy Johnson. Well, there's only there's only 13 cars on the lead lap right now, so you don't have a huge buffer. But I I, I don't think you can put more than two tires on. Do you, Larry? I think you're going to see people staying out. I think you're going to see two tires. I think it's going to be a smorgasbord. The bottom line, you guys know, if you're not in the first two rows on the restart, if you don't do something off the wall, it's you're not going to win the race. Yeah, and it's going to get physical. Well, that's and I think that's where you have to work it, right? Everything has to go right here. If you're William Byron, you're got to if you come in and take two tires, you're darn right. One of those guys in the back is going to stay out and try to go for track position. Now you're going to have to put the bumper to him and move him out of the way. Yeah, it's going to be I think he's saying his hair is standing up on his arms and the way everybody races here. Who's to say there's only going to be one restart? Oh, well, with these next gen cars, it, they're just so tough that you can you can do a lot of pushing and you can do a lot of shoving and those noses and, and tails are still going to be fine. So uh, this is going to get as physical of any race that we've seen so far. The bad news is for William Byron, your leader, the car should come out with three laps to go. The good news is if you're Rick Hendrick is all three of your cars are running one, two, three. You've got three shots at this. Well, they're using code. Chris Gabehart just told Denny Hamlin, quarter pounder. He says, I don't have that code on my dash. What is that? Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe he was calling in his that lunch, ain't his lunch order. I don't know. All right, let's talk about the restart. I know we're going to have pit stops here, but, you know, last week, the last restart at Richmond was the subject of controversy all week long. Martin Truex had dominated the race. Did he deserve to win it? Yeah, he probably did. Uh, did Denny Hamlin get away with one? Yeah, he probably did. But I had a long talk with Alton Sawyer this morning, NASCAR's senior VP of competition. We talked about the restart zone as being like a strike zone in baseball. There's ball and strike calls. It's a bang-bang call, he said. There, Hamlin is throttled up. And here, before the zone starts, so is Truex. And they ended up even down in turn number one. So NASCAR made the call, quickly reviewed the call, said it was good, and raced on. We inquired, was the call under further review? They said no. Ball and strike call. But uh, Elton told me this morning, he said, if we see something egregious, we will react accordingly. Here's some Denny Hamlin radio. I mean, green white checker is just going to be bumper cars for two laps, right? I mean, what the hell is tires even going to do? Get four, so we know where you're going to go. That's a good question. Well, that that's true, and it is going to be bumper cars because everybody's going to want to do everything that they can to put themselves in position to win the race. And if it means shove two guys in front of you out of the way, that's what you got to do. Well, he's got the affordability to watch these other guys. He's probably going to do something the opposite of what they do. If Byron Pitts in there, you darn right. Chris Gabehart said stay out, and that's what he's thinking. Do what they don't. Now they are still cleaning up from the fire under the right front of uh, John Hunter Nemechek's car, which is now being towed off to the garage. So pit road will be closed for uh, at least one more lap here. Well, if those three Hendrick cars are all in the same strategy, that's that's two rows uh, that you can clog up on the inside. You got Denny Hamlin on the outside talking like he's not going to pit. 
So that's it's only two laps. And it's like Larry said, I mean, it's going to be really, really difficult to make up that in, in two laps here at Martinsville if you don't if you aren't in the first two rows. Still have a lot of cleanup down here in the pits with Nemechek still on fire, by the way. That's what the delay is. A lot of a lot of cleanup down in Nemechek's pit box. I nope. feel for you. Rudy Fugel, man, he is uh, oh that head goodness. is spinning. Wow, that's a, I that's told a you, pile yeah. of speed drive. And half of Myrtle Beach sitting if, down there. If Alex Bowman was planning on pitting, it's going to be hard to get out of that stall. Yeah, they're going to have to sweep it up there. There's that grandfather clock. Who's going to get it? Well, let's just make something clear. That's <laughs> a replica of the grandfather clock. That one's a little bit beat up, Clint. Look at that thing. I hate to say this. Looks like it's run a few laps here. Yeah, it's been bolted down. Yeah, they come. I ain't too sure. They that, come in a box. They, yeah, they, they, Reagan's they old man together. has that. I, that one looks like the original right there. All right, so it is still a Ridgeway <laughs> clock, uh, even though Howard Miller, a big clockmaker in Zeeland, Michigan, bought Ridgeway nearly 20 years ago. They kept making clocks in Ridgeway until finally the plant closed. Now they're made in Michigan, but it's still a Ridgeway clock. Uh, that goes to the winner. He didn't know that either, did he, Kevin? No, I did not, but it's still one of the most unique trophies in NASCAR, and everybody yes. in this field wants one. Nor do I know where Zeeland, Michigan is. Yeah. See, I think this is the model that we got right here, Kevin. I think this <laughs> is, I don't know what happened. Let me show you. I've got, I've got that one. I've got that one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that one. Look at this one from the 80s, the 80s model right here. All right, huh? that, Come on, that adds from about 1973. Yeah. I don't know. That one looks like an 80s model. <laughs> like, I'm so nervous. I'm just making stuff up up here. I am nervous for everybody involved in this equation. There's a lot of decisions being made. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe this happened. Uh, big hats off to our Fox Sports crew, our cameramen, our tape operators, everybody who's involved in putting this show on. And congratulations to the weekend's winners. Christian Eckes in trucks, Eric Almarola in the Xfinity Series, and on FS1, John Force won last night. Hey, how about that? 74 years and 11 months, and he's made it to the semifinal round today. My hero, on fire out Excuse there. Excuse me. Hey, I want to bring something up here. There is a tremendous amount of cars between your first place car, William Byron, and your second place car, Chase Elliott. Rudy Fugel has a decision to make. They're all going to be able to watch him way before then. The pressure is on Rudy Fugel. What do you do, pit or not pit? They're open. Right, watch it. Be open. And uh, let me correct. Tony Stewart has made it to uh, the semifinal round. You'll have drag racing coverage later tonight on FS1. Well, I don't think no. no. Red light's still on on pit road. Yeah, the lights on are red. No, it's no. Green. It is it green. Danny Hamlin's pitting. I told you, do what they don't. A lot of cars stayed out right there. I think Danny Hamlin's in trouble. Hamlin, three other cars in the back of the pack are pitting Jamie well we listened to that radio on the 11 it sounded like they didn't want to pit that there was no point in pitting but here they are coming down for their last stop of the day as they jack the right side clear tear off this will be an interesting strategy call to see how much ground the 11 can make up five time winner here at Martinsville they know how to get it done I don't know if there's enough time though Mike so Tyler Reddick Eric Jones and Ryan Priest all in the lead lap all pitted a yeah, lot of rolling around here under caution. Clean these tires up. All you guys on old, old, old tires. You see William Byron scrubbing them things in. All that rubber that we were talking about got picked up like a vacuum. What vacuum what was? It was these race cars. Yeah, and the vacuum is is the, the hot, sticky tires that, that picked it up off the racetrack. So uh, we've seen William Byron warming up his tires really since the, the caution came out. Like they never had any plan to any plan to pit. He knew he needed to keep them clean. And if he didn't, if he did pit, they were only going to put two tires on to keep those left sides clean. So now six of the lap down cars are pitting. I think they thought some more cars were going to pit there. They're way back. Well, it's still going to be a race between the cars up front. Hamlin will restart 10th. Yeah, the, the cars up front that, that didn't pit. I mean, you still have that opportunity to push and shove, but for William Byron's sake, he knows that Kyle Larson's probably not going to shove as hard as it if it was somebody else not on his team. <laughs> for my first days in a car, Kevin, 
alongside of you, what did they tell you? I don't care what you do, don't wreck yourselves. Yeah. Do not take this win from our company. So Denny Hamlin was told on the radio, if any of the Hendrick cars pit, stay out. They didn't, he did the opposite, he came in. Do what they don't. Ooh, somebody there was right over the choose B. That's because we're not choosing yet. Okay. Yeah, the lap cars are, are dropping back, so the, yep. the lead lap cars are uh, catching up and lining themselves up in front of the lap down cars that did not pit. Will this be? I mean, it's obviously an overtime, and you said it, Mike. Will it be only one? I, who knows? There's a lot going to happen here. Cautions breed cautions. I really thought that this equation would be shook up a lot farther than this. Well, it's still going to be really difficult to get going. The cars are up front that, that did not pit are not going to feel very good. That things are going to take off headed north when you're trying to go the other way down here in turn one. Have to be ready for it. They're all going to be that way. Don't overdrive the corner and slide up. Don't wreck each other. The best thing the three Hendrick Chevys up front have going for them is that the six cars right behind them did not pit either. You have a big gap back to Hamlin with four fresh tires who will restart. Well, right now he's 10th. We'll see how the choose goes. Such a huge turnaround for Ryan Blaney in that 12 car. They have been all over the place in this racetrack today. Yeah, and if Chase Elliott can stay close on this restart on the outside and keep William Byron from making the exit of that corner, he's going to have a shot at this thing, but it's all going to talk um, happen on the takeoff here on the restart and how he can get into turn one and, and how far he can stay up beside William Byron. There has been a tremendous amount of rubber picked up. It's all on these tires. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get them tires cleaned up, get some temperature back in them, spin them, do everything you can do, clean these babies up. John Hunter Nemechek checked and released at the infield care center. So the front row is Byron and Elliott. Kyle Larson is third in the stealing seat, and he is right alongside Ryan Blaney, the first non Hendrick car in the race. You said it, and that is a stealing seat. If those cars drive off in the corner, he's got the forward ability to back off a little bit. Let them race each other off in the corner. They both slide up, take it and move each other up the track. They'll hand it to him. All right, here we go to credit one overtime at Martinsville. Byron Elliott, green flag. It stuck pretty good there, Kevin. I'm surprised. Three wide back there. Hamlin still 10. Elliott put the bumper to him. Chase Elliott to third. Crash turn four. Three cars around. I no think they flag. made it white. No, no flag. Still white green. flag. Green, green, green. green. Everybody gets away. Slipping and sliding around. Byron way out in the front. Likes what he sees in the mirror. Larson trying to steal second from Chase Elliott. Wallace behind him. William Byron. Comes to the flag and wins the cookout 400. One, two, three finish for Hendrick Motorsports. 40th anniversary. Look at these people on their feet off of two. Unbelievable. All their employees off of two on their feet. That is awesome. First time that's ever happened at Martinsville Speedway. One team taking the top three spots. Oh, yeah. here just saw their guys win the race that's pretty good 13th career win for William Byron and third of the season he is three four eight I think in any league you'd like to be batting 375 at this point in the season hey I was nervous for him I was yeah. nervous for all of them he needs to drive on over there to turn two in front of all those employees over there and do that burnout they're the ones that brung them. Last fall of Martinsville, he ran only a handful of laps in the top 10 all day. And here, thanks in part to a pit stop call that here got him. I think he's going to. What? In the green flag cycle to pit, and he drives to victory. Watch and it. goes yes. to celebrate in front of the Hendrick faithful outside turn two. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Put it right to pit. Turn it down. Regan? Well, Jeff Gordon down here with Hendrick Motorsports. Jeff, 
You've seen a lot of things in your day. A one, two, three on the 40th anniversary of that first win. You just can't script it any better. First, I just want to say hi to Mr. and Mrs. Hendrick. I know how bummed they were not to be here, but how excited they are that all of our folks are here to be able to see this happen. I mean, you just you can't script it like this. I knew we had good race cars when they showed up here yesterday, but the, the race, the way it played out to get, you know, that, that green flag stop was it. Our cars were just so good on the short runs. We just need to get that track position and then that last race, oh my God, I did not want to see that. <laughs> um, and then I just was so hoping we could get the one, two, three, and I'm just, you know, these guys, uh, these these three guys as well as Bowman, I mean, they just drove their butts off. Great race, but how about that, that William Byron, that 24 car? Every time we have a milestone day or opportunity or, or, or moment, he steps up and, uh, you know, he got number 300, and this is this is going to be a huge one for him and, and the whole organization. Thank you. Congrats, Jeff. Enjoy the celebration. Nine drivers have now accounted for Hendrick Motorsports' 29 victories at Martinsville, the most by an organization at any single track. The 26-year-old from Charlotte, North Carolina, celebrates his 13th career NASCAR Cup win. Jamie. He said I was happy yesterday with this race car. This pit crew got it done. William wants to get that checkered flag. William, the celebration all weekend long for Hendrick Motorsports 40th anniversary. You get the job done. You're the one standing here. What does it mean to you, to Rudy, and this entire team? Yeah, I just uh, I just want to thank Chase for racing me clean there. It could get really physical at the end. and. Uh, you know, he gave me a shot, which is expected, but uh, we all finished it off. So just uh, so proud of everyone at Hendrick Motorsports. Um, grew up a big Hendrick fan, and uh, to be here for the 40th anniversary and all that goes into just this organization, all the people, it's all about the people, and just want to thank Mr. Hendrick and, and Linda and, and everyone involved. So um, it's pretty pretty awesome, pretty badass to win it. At Martinsville, we've been, uh, been struggling at the short tracks and uh, just – kept inching up on it and I got a great team and um, they just kept my head in it and it stunk to uh, do a restart there at the end like that but uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. That's what I was going to ask you about two moments in particular. Rudy decides under green flag conditions to bring you down pit road first. That got you the track position and then two laps to go the caution comes out. How did you handle all that? Yeah, I mean that was a great call. It didn't get us the, the track position right away but we had a little bit uh, more heat in our tires so uh, seemed like I fired off a little bit faster than those guys and was able to, to get a, ahead of them. So we had a great car in the third stage, first and third stage. And um, just want to thank all the 24 fans. Thanks for sticking with us and uh, just uh, just super excited. I don't really know how to put it in words, but I'm a little tired. I hit the wall over there. So I hit the wall a lot this weekend. So I don't know why. <laughs> Congratulations. William Byron wins at Martinsville. Well, Kyle Larson comes up in the runner-up comes home in the runner-up position. Kyle, I know you always want to win a race, but I got to imagine with the circumstances today that this is pretty special. Yeah, no doubt. It's uh, really special too to get a, a one-two-three there with uh, William, Chase, and I. So, um, yeah, just a, a great day for Hendrick Motorsports. It's been a great 40 seasons for them. Uh, really cool to have you know 1,500 people here from Hendrick Motorsports to celebrate. And congrats to William. He did it. He did a really good job. Um, Kind of just schooled us all there after that green flag stop. He did a really good job passing all of us. So and then he was able to set a good pace and still get through traffic good. So um, my car, though, felt felt really good as well. I think we were all kind of the same speed, honestly. So uh, just lost a little bit, of, little bit of track position there in the second stage and just was never kind of able to overcome it. But uh, solid day. Congrats to Rick Hendrick, Linda, uh, all of Hendrick Motorsports, everybody who's here at the racetrack as well as you know back at home. So um, just awesome, awesome day. Racing teammates at the end like that. How nerve-wracking is that when you know that you're one, two, three, and you want to try and keep it that way? Yeah, no, it was uh, it was sketchy. I wasn't sure you know, how aggressive you know, they were going to be. I knew William, obviously, was going to be very aggressive because he was going to win until that caution came out, and uh, yeah, they kind or he went in there and, and doored him up a little bit, and um, then yeah, just uh, thankfully though it all kind of shook out, and we were able to get one spot there and, and still get a top three for HMS. Thanks, Scott. We're going to step over here to Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott, the third place finisher, the other part of this one, two, three today. It looked like you gave it everything you had on that last restart. Just couldn't quite get there. Unfortunately, lost a spot two when it was all said and done. Oh, yeah. Second or third. What's it matter, you know, at that point? But, 
Yeah, you know, obviously number one, congrats to William and everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, Rick and Linda and, and all the folks, uh, Jeff and Jeff and Chad and, and all the people that, uh, you know, put this together for us, that they have a, a unbelievable program and, and I think we're all proud to call it home and, and uh, it was awesome hosting um, over a thousand uh, folks from, from Hendrick today, employees and their families. So uh, glad one of us could get it done. Obviously wish we could have got it done, you know, selfishly like anybody would, but uh, nice to have a couple solid weeks and, and to be in contention there for a win is, um, you know, hadn't been in contention to win one in a while. So it was fun to, to kind of get to that last restart and, and, and it actually matters. So um, enjoyed that aspect and, and certainly hungry for more. You mentioned being in contention there. It seems like this nine team really starting to hit their stride, knocking on that door to get that win. How good does that feel to know that it's coming closer? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've the last couple of weeks and, and really not just the last couple of weeks, but I feel like uh, throughout a lot of the season this year, we've just been working in a good direction, working really well together and, and um, pit stops have been really good. Allen's been calling really good races. I mean, all that stuff has been going uh, in, a, in a really positive direction, in my opinion. And um, I think if we can just keep producing that, we'll we'll get our turn one day. Thanks, Chase. Congrats. 18 years ago. Bill Byron brought his then eight year old son to see his first ever NASCAR race at Martinsville. Today, that young man, William Byron, leads a one, two, three Hendrick finish in the cookout 400. Got the heart of a soldier. Quick draw from my holster. Can you feel it getting closer? I keep coming back. It's race day in the desert. The NHRA Camping World Drag Racing Series is in Phoenix for the Arizona Nationals. Will Tony Stewart earn his first top fuel win? Stay tuned after the cup race to find out right here on FS1. All right, thanks, Brian. NASCAR Hall of Famer Tony Stewart racing out in Arizona. We'll see that immediately following post-race coverage. But today, of course, it is all about William Byron and Martinsville getting the victory out there for Hendrick Motorsports. The 29th time this team has won at this racetrack. 13th career cup win for William Byron and third this season. I'll tell you, it's a ruby red celebration, but they clicked those ruby red slippers and they said, there's no place like Martinsville. There's no place like Martinsville. Well, it's amazing. Go back to the race last week at Richmond. It was pit road that was a difference maker with less than 10 to go. Look at today. It was a pit road situation that made a difference with just a little over 100 laps to go with Rudy Fugel, the crew chief for William Byron, bringing him to pit road first during mm -hmm. those green flag pit stops and had a second quicker stop essentially than Denny Hamlin. Well, and I think about the pressure of, of not pitting at the very end. That had to be hard to, to, to make that decision. But Byron did a really good job, and, and, and Kyle Larson referenced this. When they cycled through the pit stops, Byron had a little bit of heat in his tires and was able to make a pass on all those guys. It wasn't like he just cycled to the front. He actually had to make a pass on a few of those guys they did close that gap down but he earned this one and the restart right restarts were all the talk this past week between teammates and, and we saw it last week we saw a restart we saw the last two laps and these guys as you heard William Byron say he gave Chase Elliott gave him a little nudge but but raced them clean yeah I would have never thought we would have just had one overtime finish but <laughs> yeah. we got, had one that was set up I figured we were going to end up having a multitude but maybe the difference maker was the fact that it was three teammates that were up there with Larson Elliott and William Byron yeah it's such a fine balance with this car though you have to hit some a lot harder than you did with with the previous car and, and Chase gave him a little shot and I, I promise you if he could take that back he would have given that shot just a little bit more and when he <laughs> did he lost some of his momentum um, but but William referenced it he knew that was gonna happen yeah. that's what happens at Martinsville you have to expect that if you're the leader you know you're gonna get hit and if you're in second you know you're gonna do it to him one two three finish for Hendrick Motorsports the first time it's happened at Martinsville the driver who did finish fourth had a great day that would be Bubba Wallace and he's standing by with Jamie Little a solid day for Bubba Wallace, I know, coming, and that's what you guys wanted. Just no mistakes, finish the race where we can run. How good was this day for you? Yeah, it was solid. Um, you know, it's it's nice to be able to take some things back that I learned in the car and, and where we could be better and debrief about it instead of being pissed off, frustrated, you know, at bad luck or, you know, whatever happens, karma. Um, but definitely learned a lot today, so excited to get back to the shop. Uh, to, oh, damn, I said shop, didn't I? Hair speed. Um, <laughs> tomorrow and debrief and you know if we come back tomorrow to race I think we could be even better so uh, just hats off to everybody on the 23 car uh, this McDonald's Toyota Camry was really really strong all day lost a little bit on that last stop but never give up on restarts so it was a good net for us um, something to build on and we'll go to Texas and have some fun
I know Boyer said how impressed he was with you all day long, but you look at your stats, you've been 11th or better the last four races here. Now you get a top five. What have you been doing to make yourself better here? Nah, it's just Clint needs to put some respect on my name. That's all. So don't count us out. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, earlier today you did say, Jamie, that this You're is a great acknowledge no, that? I'm yeah. just going to keep on going. Just keep on <laughs> swimming. Time. Just keep on swimming. Uh, you did say that this is a great track for Bubba Wallace. So he, he did. Jamie yeah. McMurray said that about you, Bubba Wallace. Um, and, and what did we see out of him today? It, it has been a good track for him. And, and Larry, I think, talked about this in our pre-race show. This is one of those places that w once you get a handle on it, you seem to kind of have good runs here because it's a really tricky, even though it looks simple, it's a really tricky racetrack. I think Bubba having some confidence, the run that he had last week at Richmond, I know he didn't get the finish that he deserved or where he ran the whole race at Richmond last week, but they've been running really well. And when we talked about it in our break, that the Twitters have been good at the short tracks yeah. and they were good, really good here again today. Didn't have a car capable of winning today, but I thought he did a really good job staying out of trouble, didn't make too many enemies, and was able to, to come up with a good finish. You heard the guys in the booth talking about Ryan Blaney's day. The defending series champ was on Race Hub all day on Thursday, talked about Martinsville. He brought it home with a fifth place finish. He is standing by with Regan Smith. Well, Ryan Blaney comes home with a fifth place finish today. Ryan, seemed like a working man's day. He had that extra pit stop early on, battling to recover from that point on, and really seemed to get the car good at the end. Yeah, we got good at the end. Um, yeah, it was an uphill battle for sure, you know, just uh, having to come back down pit road, restart in the back. Nobody can pass anybody, and um, Jonathan made a good call to put two on it. Started the third stage and, and kind of established ourselves a little bit back in the top ten, and then was able to, like, work on our car again. Okay, we had a little bit of clean air. What are your, what's your car doing? How can we get it better? And um, after the green flag stop, I was really fast. Like, I drove, I, I passed a handful of guys, which I was shocked, and I kind of held on pretty good, and... Um, kind of stalled out when I got to the 11. But, uh, yeah, overall, proud of the fight back from our group. Um, obviously not the first half of the race we wanted. Uh, didn't get any stage points. But um, overall, really proud of the fight and perseverance of the advanced auto parts for Mustang uh, 12 team. So we'll go on to Texas. How, how good is that to know when you come back here in the fall that you guys can have a race like that where things don't go exactly like you want, but you are able to fight back through and still get up and have a great result? Yeah, I mean, I knew it was an uphill battle, um, and really the first round of the race, I wasn't very good. I kind of, I kind of lost some spots and was really free, so we tightened up, and then we had to come back down pit road, and then I start last, so now I'm double tight because you're get you're tighter in the, in the pack, and then we already adjusted. We think if we're going to be for clean air, so it just took us a while to kind of battle back, and um, just proud of you know them sticking with it, you know, getting creative, putting two on it with a lot of laps on our lefts, and and having faith that we could kind of hang on, and and we did, and uh, yeah, just. 12 team does that really well, you know, just fight through times that, that aren't very good or you get set back, you just, just stay in the game. So appreciate uh, all those guys for sticking with it. Thanks, Ryan. Solid day for Alex Bowman, brings it home eighth, but the big picture here is Hendrick's big celebration, their 40th anniversary. What does it mean to you to be part of that and to have such a solid day as well? Yeah, for sure. It's super cool to see the, the 24 team get a win and um, on such a historic day, it means so much to Mr. and Mrs. H, um, super cool to have these ruby red Chevy Camaros on the track and uh, yeah, have so many people here. It's, it's definitely special. Wish we would have had a little better day with our Ally 48. Um, the last two runs, we just struggled a lot. Uh, I, we tightened up all day and then the racetrack got black and finally we got on the other side of it and got too tight. And that last restart, I didn't stand a chance. The 14 drove through me all four corners. So um, just uh, tough there to lose a couple spots, but that's short track racing part of it at times so um yeah move, moving on to next week hopefully it's good for us but a, a great day for hendrick motorsports really great day for hendrick motorsports chad canouse is going to be on race hub this week on wednesday look forward to catching up with him and seeing what this really meant for him you saw him out there hugging jeff gordon and listen we've seen over the years so many historic moments from hendrick motorsports what is it like for you, both of you guys to witness this one well i guess to be in that garage area and on pit road 40 years ago for that race in the spring of 1984 and the rumblings were in the garage area that this was going to be their last race and then jeff bodine goes out there and wins a race and to see all they've accomplished the laps that they've led, the races that they've won, and to do it in the fashion that they did today. I mean, how many times did we see those four cars running right together <laughs> inside the top five? And they led a combined total of 238 laps. So not only did they get this win today, it was a dominating performance by the entire organization.
All right, uh, we do have a, a guest joining us right now. It's awesome to have uh, Rick Hendrick, Mr. H, on the phone with us. Of course, we know oh. that he wasn't able to make it to the race today uh, because he did have knee surgery, and, and so we're so happy that you can take a few minutes to join us. I was just asking Larry McReynolds uh, about what it's like for him to kind of witness what you guys did today. For you, Mr. H, all of the milestones, all of the amazing things that your team has accomplished, to see everybody there today, one, two, three, finish. How do you put the emotions together? Uh, it was a special day and, uh, you know, never thought that you know, we'd end up running one, two, three. And when that caution came out, I thought, man, we're in, <laughs> we're in trouble. I've been there before and we were one, two, and then that was uh, a caution. And then we ended up running, I don't know, fourth or fifth. So it's just a great day for all of our people and to celebrate 40 years and come back to that, uh, to Martinsville and then run one, two, three. Uh, all the people are going to stay and, uh, and go down and celebrate with the drivers, so, which I was there, uh -oh. but uh, getting my leg fixed. So, Rick, let, let's talk about that caution that came out that sent us into overtime finish. At that point, your guys are running one, two, three. Bowman's not far back there. Your crew chief, they had the decision to either pit or stay out, and then your drivers had the decision of what to do with the choose rule. You had to be sitting up in the, the, the edge of your seat on this whole deal. Yeah. I, I tell you, Larry, I don't think I've ever been that that nervous <laughs> and, uh, and, and was hoping that they wouldn't fit and hoping enough folks stayed out there with us. But, man, I have to, uh, my heart now is just getting back to normal, I think. Well, I think we all kind of felt the same way sitting back here watching it, nervous for you. As I watched those cars, one, two, three, across the start finish line, I couldn't help but think about the 97 Daytona 500 and, and what a moment that was for you. You've won so many races. I mean, where does this rank for you uh, throughout the, your, the NASCAR wins? Well, I, I think when I look at the fact that we were, we're celebrating 40 years and we have been planning this for so long, and then I had to have this operation, couldn't be there. And uh, but I, I gotta gotta believe to set a record at Martinsville, the, the place where we, uh, as Larry said, we hadn't won that race. I, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be talking to you guys today. I don't know what we'd be doing, but uh, such a momentous momentous occasion, I guess. I, I'm uh, I, I could I don't think I've ever had one that means any more than this one. So maybe that first one. They kept us going, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but this has been a special day. Well, thank you so much for taking. I know you probably have 80 phone calls to make between all of your drivers and Jeff and all of your crew guys, so we really appreciate you taking a few minutes to jump on with us. We, we send you all the love and, and all the well wishes. Hope you feel better, Rick. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. That was awesome. You, you said calls. unexpected. How many, how many text messages? Do you yeah, think a lot. Rick had? I'm I bet, sure his phone is going yeah. crazy. The biggest thing I was thinking about <laughs> when Rick was speaking right there, and we did a, a special on Race Hub last year, is when he got win number one 40 years ago. Yeah. Him and Linda, they were in church. Yeah. They got the call from his mom. Guess what? We won. <laughs> and now the man sitting at home watching his drivers sit there and run one, two, three to win on the 40th anniversary of that very first We race. needed a, a Rick Hendrick camera for this entire oh race. Because I bet you, even though he's got a, a bum knee right now, I bet you he was ready to jump off that couch and celebrate with his guys. Cannot imagine what that man was thinking and, and just how gratified. But he said it in our pre-race. It's about the people. It and is. that's his philosophy at Hendrick Motors. Well, and how special for all the 1,500 yeah. like past employees to get to be there today. We saw the the the, the, the deflation in their face when yeah. the caution came out. <laughs> so it was cool that they were actually able to uh, to get the win. And I thought it's going to be a special drive home from Martinsville for all those yeah. fans. Congratulations to William Byron, of course, to Hendrick Motorsports and all of the employees that were in attendance today for their Ruby Red celebration. I'm sure it'll be quite the party. Remember, you can catch Race Up weeknights on FS1 at 6 Eastern. Chad Knauss is going to be on the show Wednesday. That'll be a fun conversation. We head to Texas next Sunday. Race day starts at 2 Eastern on FS1. Next on FS1, it's NHRA Arizona Nationals. We'll see you next week, guys. So